We last spoke about the perma shelf in 2022, just two years ago. Surely, by definition, the shelf is supposed to stay permanent. Why are we revisiting it less than two years later? Well, of course, it's the shelf that's permanent. Very specific, a very clearly defined shelf. It can only hold 10 bottles. It's very difficult for us to whittle it down to what those 10 bottles are going to be, if you're my kind of whiskey botherer, of course. But we have to try these things, and we have to try it for a few reasons. I'm going to tackle them tonight. Uh, that was 2022. This is 2024. Let's get to it, and I'll see you in a second. <laughs> Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the VPUB. I hope you're all doing very well. I hope you're having a comfortable and enjoyable wee Thursday night. And I hope that uh, I can not spoil it. Maybe if everything's good, I can maybe try and enhance it a wee bit. Just a solo session tonight. No guest tonight. It's just myself talking about a topic, as I say, that we last discussed back in 2022. A lot changes in two years. Or does it? It's kind of going to be the theme tonight. Less to do with, I think, the bottles, less to do with exciting new things, less to do with uh, discovery and exploration and all of that. I think it's more to do with setting perspectives and expectations, helping people that are new into the scene and kind of just trying to get a handle on just how much things have changed for the core of our focus as whiskey botherers in the last two years. Um, it was hard when I first did this session back in 2022. It was very, very difficult to leave a lot of bottles off the shelf and it's happened again and I feel really, really bad for it. However, we have to kind of focus, we have to make really hard decisions. We have to put ourselves in the position of people that do have to make really hard decisions because of the availability that's next to them potentially, because of the limited budget that they have, because of the limited knowledge or exploration or time or liver capacity that they've got or limited real, real estate. There's lots of reasons for people not to just continually buy everything that they, that they would like just to follow their whim. Sometimes we need to make hard decisions and through making those hard decisions, here's the crucial thing to all of this. Once we've gone through that process, we're left with, we've distilled it down into, pardon the pun, we've distilled it down into a, a selection of bottles that are rock solid recommendations that you can rhyme off to anyone that's curious about following you down the whiskey path. I hope that we can use that tonight as the foundation for our discussion. I'm going to use it for different things. It's a VPUB, isn't it? There's always a, an angle, right? There's always a, an ulterior motive. There's always an agenda. Usually that agenda is price, and that will raise its head tonight. I have to tackle it. I just have to talk about it. I have to, um, uh, yeah. Before we can uh, change perspectives, we need to get perspective. We need to We need to be aware. That's the first thing. And then once we've done that, we can look at our selection of bottles and we can measure things and we can measure the effect that it's had on us, measure the effect that it's having on our mood, our attitude towards whiskey, how much it's weighing on our wallet and things that we can do to combat all of those things in a positive way so that we can continue enjoying whiskey. One of the most precious gifts, honestly, that I've ever happened upon is an interest in my life. I want it to continue to be positive, and I'm going to try and keep the VPUB as positive as I pos possibly can. However, I do have to tackle negative topics from time to time, and there will be a wee bit of negativity that slides into the discussion tonight. With your help, we'll try and keep it positive. Talking about your help, before we get into all of that, before I frame everything, let me jump in to the Whiskey Lounge and welcome some of you 
beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated bar flies. My setup's a wee bit different tonight. Um, hopefully it's not going to knock me off too much. Hopefully it's all going to be fine. Um, I just need to make it just a wee bit bigger for my old middle-aged eyes. There we go, I it see. It's going to work a bit better with that. I've zoomed in a wee bit. How are you all doing? Hope you're doing well. I've got something in a glass. I'll share with you in a second what this is. But it's very much uh, on the list tonight. It was on the perma shelf in 2022, and it remains on the perma shelf in 2024. There's your first spoiler. Cheers, everyone. Welcome, my pal Jimmy Jazz is in saying good evening, Aquavite. Jimmy Leg is also here too. Uh, wonderful to see both the Jimmies from the northeast uh, North America. One's in Canada, one's in the US. Wonderful to have the two Jimmies in tonight commenting right next to each other there. George Ellis here saying hello, Ryan. My only problem with my perma shelf is the continued disappearance of the contents. Hope you're very well. Hey, I'm sure it's in a responsible way, George. And that's actually a good problem to have. It means that you're enjoying it. Dave Barnes is saying, looking forward to tonight's show. First ram in two weeks after bloody COVID. That's right, Dave, a wee bit poorly. Buddy, I hope you're recovered. I hope you're feeling well. I hope your taste, smell and health and general outlook is all back to normal. It's good to have you in here, my friend. And I know what it's like after you've had to go without drams for a wee while. You'll be looking forward to it. Brian Cabayas is in. Saying good morning from Australia. Wonderful to welcome you over a cup of coffee, Brian. I hope your day is looking great. Right, uh, just coming into the... It slipped into the second half of summertime for you now, Brian, hasn't it? It's wonderful that you're here every week. I love it. Max Crichton is saying good evening, my friend. I don't really have a perma shelf, but I'm quite curious on what people have permanently. I know... And what I have to do, Max, is I'm not forcing anyone to curate a perma shelf. But... but Put thought into it. Imagine that you did have a perma shelf. Imagine that you had a shelf that could only take 10 bottles and you have to specify what those 10 bottles are. I'll frame it a wee bit more than that, Max, but this is just another vehicle for us to think hard about whiskey and think hard about whiskey decisions. And if we're going to spend hard-earned cash on that whiskey, we're going to think hard about where that money's going to go and on what. And a lot of those decisions can be easily answered when we ask ourselves this question. Would we recommend it? Would we stake our reputation on recommending it to a pal? A pal that whose opinion we valued, someone that we trusted, someone that we wanted to enjoy the whiskey, which is almost everyone, right? If it's that type of whiskey, then it's worth consideration for the perma shelf. I'll frame up more in a wee bit, Max. Road to Drama is here saying, Evening Roy, good to see you. Whiskey Weekend Dram Harrow is saying, Next Scotland trip planned. End of April, early May, Speyside and Campbelltown. Harrow, I bet you're excited to out your wee head. That's fantastic. Uh, it's a kind of diagonal line, isn't it? Going from Speyside up in the northeast down to Campbelltown in the southwest. I bet you're going to have a fantastic time. And I have to say, late April, early May is a pretty good time to come. It's pre midgy season, and the weather's often really good in springtime. Ah, really good is relative. We're talking about Scottish weather, of course. Highland Hamish is here. Good to, gre greetings from Inverness, he's saying. To all the dry January people, boom, you're back in the game. Do you know that's a great thing, Hamish? It's a great thing to welcome people back to their drams, their beers, their wee glasses of wine with dinner, whatever it is, after toiling through dry January. This uh, month I had a d difficulty with that. Uh, I had to find a new accountant. Long story, doesn't matter. But I managed to find a new accountant, eh, thanks to my pal Craig, for helping me do that. And eh, these accountants came in at the last minute and helped me file my uh, my return. Um, as I was speaking to the guy who was handling eh, my return, he was so looking forward to getting to the end of January uh, to, to enjoy a wee drink again. Fair play to him. He's toiled through January and he's kept it dry. Uh, George, I hope you're doing very well, and I hope you're enjoying the wee dram tonight. I know you won't be watching the V-Pub tonight. I know you're not into whiskey, but whatever you're sipping, I'll raise a glass and hope that it's going to do well. Well done to you and everyone that succeeded in dry January. Crazy thing. As I'm standing in the accountants, somebody comes up to me from one of the partners from the accountancy, comes up and says, Roy, and it's one of us, one of the community, uh, Callum. <laughs> <laughs> works in the accountants. Quite incredible. Hey, wonderful to meet you, Callum. Sorry I was out of sorts and didn't recognise you, but it was the first time we'd met face-to-face, -face, only met virtually beforehand. This dry January thing has come to an end. If it was me, 
and I am not any of you and none of you are me. If it was me, any time I've tried to go a sustained period without and forcibly sustain, staying away from alcohol for non-critical reasons, you know, I've felt healthy and everything otherwise, it's just because I want to prove to myself that I can do it. When I come back to it, this is my personality. I tend to go back harder than I would have if I just kept the balance in check. Alcohol is a very, very fickle partner. I think one size does not fit all. I think it's different for everyone. And I think that we should all find our own way to manage what's responsible way of consuming alcohol. If dry Januaries, dry weeks, trying to find 200 dry nights in a year or more, or whatever measure, whatever thing you put in place to try and measure and, and, and look after your alcohol intake, do it in a way that suits you. It's very, very important. The most important thing is, whether you're putting a mechanism in place or not, is that we maintain awareness. Why am I getting so preachy? Apologies if that does sound preachy. But I, what, what do I do? I turn up every week and encourage people to drink alcohol. So I have to say things every now and again to say I'm mindful and I'm aware of it. Highland Hamish, well done to you fella for dry January. Cheers. Gino, come on. Canada's here saying hello. I hope right you're well, sir. I'm feeling very well and I'm feeling much better for being here hanging out with you folk tonight. My pal Blair Stevenson from Glasgow, Glasgow Whiskey Club is in. Good to see you, Blair. And Jimmy Legacy and perspective is one of the most, most important things in life, in my opinion, and also one of the most fickle things, one of those things that it can be easy to lose. So it's, it's worthwhile putting a wee bit of effort into now and again, Jimmy. Friends, discussion, uh, speaking to people with a different outlook is brilliant for perspective. Alistair Gray saying, good evening, Aquavite, and all the barflies. Alistair, so good to have you in, buddy. Alistair from up in Speyside. And Jean Kelly's here saying, good evening, Aquavite, and the barflies. Lovely to be in your company again. Jean, it's wonderful to welcome you here, as always. Fantastic. Keeping uh, the VIPA positive isn't too tough, says Jimmy Leg. Jimmy, I was reading that out, and it just, you see if you just touch this wrong. If you just, just, the chat jumps away down to the bottom. And it looks like I might have missed it. I never miss a Jimmy Leg comment, do I? Sorry, Jimmy, you were talking about the VPUB, uh, keeping it easy. Uh, it's easy to be positive. The chat jumped there and I'm way behind and uh, there's lots and lots of chat coming in. Fantastic. Um, some people celebrating uh, being members of the Barflies for a while. Let's give them all a wee shout. David Evans, celebrating 46 months. Do you enjoy Lakes Whiskey? Great, but ignored. I think it is a wee bit ignored in the VPUB, but it's got a very good reputation. And I think that... I was looking at a, an English whiskey today in the Good Spirits Company. The Kuduro was sitting there shouting at me, buy me, buy me, buy me, the Wireworks Kuduro. And I'm keen. But I've got quite a few Wireworks bottles down there. I've got three or four different expressions. And I thought, it might be nice if I leave a wee bit of space on, on that section of the cabinet for, for something else. And maybe, arguably, it should be a Lakes one. I hope you're enjoying it, David. Justin Wan in Hong Kong, celebrating being a member of Barfly for eight months and saying good evening, Roy. I'll start off my list with PC10. Hang about, Justin. You might hear PC10 getting spoken about tonight. Kiwi Gore uh, is in New Zealand and saying hi, everyone. Unfortunately, I have to work. We'll watch the replay tonight with a few nice drams. Thanks for dropping in in the morning and saying hello. Thanks for buying me a wee dram, Kiwi Gore. Uh, I know you do enjoy picking it up on the replay, uh, as has to be expected when you're uh, on, on the upside down there. Uh, thank you for your drama, friend. Cheers to you. Chris Brooke is celebrating being a member of Barflies for 14 months, saying I made it. Good evening, Barflies and Aquavite. Welcome, Chris. Thank you for your support. Listen, Barflies, in case anybody doesn't know, the Barflies simply join the YouTube membership by clicking that button underneath. It um, has, probably has to be in a desktop or Android. It's not on iOS. But once you sign up, you get access to colourful emoji, loyalty badges, that kind of thing, whiskey themed, channel themed. But the biggest thing that you achieve is that you have already, you're not, you've already done so. Uh, um, I am now getting much more fund and support through YouTube than I ever used to when everybody had to sit through ads. The barflies have taken care of it so that I never need to toggle on ads ever again. And for that, I'm very, very grateful. I don't like sitting through ads and I think you probably often feel the same. 
Um, uh, Ten bottles, says Blair Stevenson. I'll start with five Lagavulin. <laughs> it bought back when the price was decent. Not sure I'm playing this game correctly. Aye, that's right. The idea is, is that you're able to replace them again, and I think that might be a wee bit tricky. David Hong is coming in with a, a, a dram saying positive vibes. Uh, thank you very much, David. It's very generous, and I think it's a very worthwhile uh, thought as well as we start out on this thing, which is inevitably going to tackle a couple of a couple of wee negative angles tonight. I think we have to try and keep that perspective and uh, you know try and bring a wee bit of um, I don't know pragmatism. A appropriate judgment, that kind of thing. Keep it, everything in perspective. Thank you, David Hong, for your dram. Slant you to you. I'm with you, says Chris Brook. I tried dry February in 2020, dry February in 2022, and I found I went a little too hard once March came around. I found having two to three dry nights a week works for me as my way of managing consumption. That's right, Chris. Not all sizes fit everyone. Everybody's got to work out what brings awareness forefront for them so that they know what their consumption is. My wife came to me uh, over uh, Christmas and New Year uh, and asked if it was okay. <laughs> she realised that she was washing a lot less glasses. She realised I was just kind of consuming and obviously I took a, a three week, almost a three week break um, from broadcasting and things and from, from lots of other whiskey activity and just took a break. And she was looking at me go, ah, I noticed the difference. I noticed it. I noticed it too. Um, and I think it, what it also does is that when you take a wee break or when you measure it and you keep it in check, it keeps the appreciation quite high too. Gordon Fraser's here saying, good evening. Good evening, Gordon. Falsgraf, my friend, is here saying, my permanent shelf is not an institution, Aquavite, but there are those that just are being replaced again and again. That's exactly the bottles I want to focus on, Klaus. They can change, he's saying, but they end up staying the same for a long while. That's exactly the bottles I'm after in the discussion tonight. And look who's in my pal from Louisiana, Leanne from Scotch and Bayou. Hello, Barflies and Aquavite. Cheers and slanchy, y'all. Leanne, it's so good to be able to welcome you here. Cheers, everyone. Okay. I keep a wee drop of that in the glass. I've got five empty Glen Cairns in front of me. Actually, I've only got four now because there's something in this. But once these glasses are full, then that's how I keep my awareness. Now, I'm not going to say that if I stop at five tonight and I decide to go and get another clean glass because there's something else, then that's okay. But that's a very deliberate act to go and do that. So I'm aware that that's now six drams of a Thursday evening I'm going to have. They might be small drams and everything, but, you know, we just keep the awareness. I'm going to go through to kick off and frame this tonight. I'm going to talk to you about what the perma shelf is. I'm going to go through all 10 bottles from 2022, just to remind you. I won't labour them. I'll just give you a quick summary. I may choose to pour from one or two of them, and I'll just lay them out here in front of the gaffer who's watching us tonight, Ralphie. This is, a, this is a gift from Ralphie. I picked this up at Good Spirits Company today. Ralphie, big guy, thank you so much for your gift. Uh, I managed to get in and get it today. First time I've been in a Good Spirits Company this year. Uh, this is a gift. Um, as you can see, it's got the Oswald logos on it. It's got the gaffer himself. And you can see it's also got his steampunker magnifier. And it's got a wee message written on it to me and things. And uh, it's just a fantastic wee thing. I'll show you. He's even put... A wee string on the back. This is just ready to go, ready to be hung up. Um, the Ralphist, the sorry, the the Ernest Ralphie. Uh, nice wee, nice wee picture and a wonderful gesture. Thank you, Bunny. I wanted to let everybody see it. So what I'll do tonight is now that that's clear, just the exact same as twenty twenty two. The ten bottles will be, and this for just for tonight. This will be the perma shelf. Of course, in my collection, it's got to stay organised. I've got to be able to know where things are and just reach for them and things. So the perma shelf is a kind of nebulous concept. It's It doesn't actually exist in here. But so many folk that I know, so many people that I enjoy drinking whiskey with, they've only got a wee handful of bottles. They've only got a dozen bottles, two dozen bottles or something. And, and, and they tend to uh, get a lot of enjoyment out of that selection. And, and that's kind of... For them, more, more, more than enough. 
again, it's not one size fits all. And some of us are just crazy. We go after it. If you come in here, you would see how just how crazy I am. I've got excuses that I can use, of course. But we over accumulate, we accumulate more things. That's a natural thing to happen if whiskey is your passion. However, there are things that we become so appreciative of that we become reluctant to go without them. They have become so solid, so reliable, available, good value, good quality, flavoursome, easy to recommend. That's probably the easiest way I can summarise what a permashelf bottle should be. Just a smack down, easy, uh, zero anxiety recommendation to make to a friend who's into whiskey, somebody who's just coming into whiskey or whatever. Something that we can all enjoy. I spoke to my patrons about this this week. I did a wee write-up. Bit deep, if I'm honest. But it's something I think about a lot. I have to think about the people that are just coming into whiskey now. Whiskey's... I think it's it's almost feels like it's starting to plateau a little bit, the popularity and the intrigue. And I wonder how much of that has got the, this perspective of this luxury placement, this expensive thing, this intimidating space to step into. We need to really work hard to make it as accessible as possible as a community in order for more people to enjoy this thing. There's plenty of whiskey out there to go around. We shouldn't be concerned about that whatsoever. But... A lot of the content that I put out there in the VPUB is very specifically about what we're going through right now, where we are on our journey. And often I worry that it's got a perspective that points a bit more towards the more mature, more seasoned whiskey journeymen, the more kind of typical whiskey botherers, the geeks and things like that. And people that are coming into this space that are looking for a guide in hand and, and in order to step in, I need to remember to try and make the content point to them a little bit too. And this permashelf topic, I hope if I do it well tonight, it's going to be a very good thing for that. You can help too, because after I've shared my 10 with you tonight, after I've scrutinized it and decide which ones are inevitably going to be updated, <laughs> you are going to have, you've forgotten this, Roy. You're going to have things to say. I don't agree with that pick, whatever. And you're maybe going to even want to list in the comments below your own 10 bottles. And I would encourage you to do that because it's gold for people coming in and watching this content. Listen, almost 400 people watching right now. Do me a wee favour before we get going tonight. I know that so many of you are just happy sitting back and watching this in the background and not participating in the chat, not really wanting to leave a comment or whatever, but indulge me tonight. Leave a wee like. Just show me that you're a real person and not a bot. If there's almost 400 of you in, click that like button just now. It does a few things, but it legitimizes this content. The discussion I'm going to have tonight, and I'll chapter mark it, I'll make it easy for people picking up on the replay to pick it up and scan through and pick up what they're interested in and in listening to. But it makes it obvious to them that it's legitimate YouTube content. YouTube tends to like it too. If they see high interaction, high participation, and lots of people clicking, there's a good chance that they're going to look after me, the channel, and things a wee bit better too. Playing the game to a certain extent, but it's another way of interacting with you to click that like button. And I'll raise this wee drip of this dram left eh, and say thank you in advance to you all. Cheers. So our permashelf can only hold 10 bottles. It's hard to whittle it down to 10. It really is. The stuff I've left off is horrible. It's embarrassing for me. It has to be things that we do not have any anxiety over replacing. That means it's got to be accessible and affordable. And it's got to be something that when it gets to the last dregs in the bottom, here's my Deanston 12. Let's get it into a glass. That's not what's in this glass that I've just finished, but the profile is very similar. So I'm going to dirty, I'm going to use a dirty glass. Let's get some of it in. I think there's two or three drams left in this bottle. Still a wee bit left, but I think this might see the end of its life this weekend, probably. This is Deanston 12. And this was on the perma shelf in 2022. In fact, it was the first pick. So when it gets to this level in the bottle, I'm looking at this going, either I've enjoyed my time with this, 
I've had an ambivalent time with this or not a nice time with it. But I'm looking at it, and if it's a permashelf bottle, I'm thinking, needs replaced. And of course, job's already done. This I was able to pick up, um, perhaps locally, Good Spirits Company, something like that. But more likely, it's been one that I've added on to get to free postage or something like that for an online delivery, or it's been picked up on offer or something. But I was actually quite surprised. I went in a Good Spirits Company today, and one of the whiskies on the list was Deanston 12, because I picked this up earlier, only to come home and set up for tonight and find this. That reassures me that this is a permashelf bottle. I had already taken the action of replacing the bottle in advance. This has been here for a wee while. It's actually quite a bit of dust on the shoulder of this bottle. It's been sitting on the shelves for a wee while. Why is this a permashelf bottle for me? In summary, do I need to explain why? Hopefully enough of you are enjoying this. Not everyone needs to enjoy everything I'm going to share tonight, of course. This is natural whiskey, 12 years old. 46.3% ABV, it tells us on the label that it's unchill filtered. It used to say that it was natural colour on the label, and I don't know why they've changed that. I'm suspicious that they still fully treat this naturally. They don't add any colour to this, or I believe any of the products from Deanston. Uh, but for some reason, it doesn't say natural colour on the label anymore. I wonder if this slightly older one does. This one doesn't, but I remember a time that it, that, that it did. And it may say natural colour somewhere else. Uh, text is very small on the back. It may say there, but what I would like to see is see where it's, they're showing off until filtered. Natural colour, integrity bottling. Regardless, we feel confident with Distel, uh, CVH Spirits as they're known now, we feel confident with their stable that they're continuing to bring us integrity. Buna having 12 is an absolute stonker and a favourite. Arguably, it should be talked about tonight. Um, we've got Lechik over there from Tobermory. We've got the Tobermory expression, of course, as well, the 12-year-old. And we've got all the great stuff that comes from Deanston in the Southern Highlands. It's an easy pick for me. Make sure it stays in shot. And that's our first. A permashelf item from 2022. Pop this back, swing straight into the second one. This is the one that I was sipping with you when we went live tonight. Um, sorry, what's happened? That's just frozen. Apologies, the chat's frozen and this, the monitor screen's frozen. I'm just going to refresh it. Okay, we're all good now. That was a wee panic. Thank you so much. And thank you all so much. Uh, sorry, there's over 400 of you in watching. Uh, um, the screen I was watching uh, earlier when I was speaking to you, wondering why it's not moving. I realised I'd frozen too. Uh, I don't know. It just, these things happen. It's, it's working fine now. We refresh. If in doubt, give it a clout, right? Okay, this is what I was sipping. Glen Cadam 10, you might remember a few years ago, I did a hero uh, video on this because it's just such a hero whiskey. Back then it was sub 40 pounds. In fact, it was often closer to 30 pounds back then. It's jumped up a wee bit in price now. It's around about the 40, 42 pounds price point for, for Glen Cadam 10. But this does tick all of those integrity boxes and how, look at that, unchill filtered, no added color, wonderful stuff. Age statement on there, 46% ABV, always around, always Remarkably consistent. The one I was sipping tonight, this one, this bottle, a wee bit creamier than I remember. Uh, and, and bottles gone by, they've sometimes been a little bit more kind of floral, uh, um, a little bit more kind of creamy. Uh, sorry, not creamy, a little bit more kind of uh, sweet and uh, fizzy. Uh, this tonight is, is creamier than I remember. Still delicious and still quite a neglected profile in Scotch whiskey. Glenmorn G10 is all ex bourbon. This Glencadam 10 is all ex bourbon. Deanston 12 is ex bourbon. But there aren't quite enough of it. There isn't quite enough of it out there. That was the second bottle on the pick. And let's throw up the third one before I jump back into the chat. This is just me reminding you of the permashelf bottles from 2022. This is another CVH product, a Burn Stewart Distel, as they were known in the past, Legic 10. The exact same specs as the Deanston, 46.3% ABV, 
an age statement on there. This is a 10-year age statement, rich peat smoke and spice. We believe this to be fully natural as well. And you might be surprised at just how much variation in colour there are between bottlings on Deanston and on Lechick. Bunnahaven too, but Bunnahaven's in a dark glass bottle. You don't see it until you pour it. But these ones in clear glass, you definitely see it. Do not be put off by colour variation. That's just reassurance that it's natural whiskey, naturally presented, where they're putting together the vatting based on flavour, not on aesthetics. We should encourage more of it. There's a dram face review that came out recently, focusing specifically on a comparison of two Legic 10 uh, expressions, completely different colours, completely different experiences, completely different times and price, but both fabulous whiskies. Very easy to put Tobermory's Legic 10 on the perma shelf. What say you, folks? Inverurie Whiskey Shop is in. If I had a 15 bottle shelf, the Virgin Oak would have sneaked in over the 12 personally. A 15 bottle shelf. So the guys up at Inverurie Whiskey Shop are needing a bigger, they need to extend the perma shelf. I'm going to grab your arm, I'm going to twist your arm a wee bit and say, no, you need to lose, you need to keep it down to 10. Force the discussion, force the issue. It's really hard. Inverurie Whiskey Shop, I think uh, um, you've reached out to us for a collaboration and at some point in the end of February. I think uh, Chuck's looking after you. Yeah, looking forward to that. I hope it can happen. Uh, Jimmy Legge is saying, I endorse selection one. So he's happy with me having. I, I'm suspicious that Jimmy Legge would also be happy about the Glencadam 10 too. Inverurie Whiskey Shop, again, is saying, Glencadam 10 has to be in there. Wonderful. Fantastic. I'm glad you guys enjoy it too. Nick Keenan, New Zealand. So good to see you, Nick. Just uh, got a new floating chair for the swimming pool. Ah, the pleasures of summertime, eh? I was in desperate need of a comfy summertime whiskey chair to help me decide my perma shelf. <laughs> Show off. I hope you're enjoying it, Nick, and it's wonderful to welcome you in behind the bar at the V Pub. Gene Kelly saying the perma shelf is your quiz tonight. You're a two a two so far. Wonderful. Judge me on this, Gene. Judge me on it. Okay. Score me at the end. See how we see how we keep it going. Jimmy Legg is saying I, end, I endorse selection too. Fantastic, Jimmy. I was confident that you would. And Sandro Fatsalari is saying my perma shelf includes Aaron 10, Decent 12. Spring back 10. And if you have the chance, spring back 12 cat strength. Maybe where you are, Sandro, you've got a chance at those. It's tough here. Lechick 10, Tobermory 12, two from the same distillery there. Excellent. Brook Laddie, classic Laddie. Port Charlotte 10, Glen Cadam 10, and the 13. Interesting. Excellent pick, Sandro. Don't leave it in the live chat. Copy and paste that. Stick it in the comments below, buddy, for everyone else. Those are solid. Wonderful recommendations. Daniel Williams is here. Good to see you, Daniel. How are you keeping? Can you believe Deanston Virgin Oak is on offer near me for €22.99? Euro €23 Euro as well. That's only £19.61. Want to know how to pull new people in? Shout this from the rooftops. This is crucial, Daniel. It's absolutely crucial. Um, the rung, that bottom rung of the ladder is getting ever higher, isn't it? There seems to be less of those whiskies that we would have once upon a time recommended still in the in the offering for the recommendation simply because of where we are in 2024. More of that later tonight, more of that to follow. And Reb Mordecai, my friend in Israel, good to see you, Reb, is saying, okay, the shelf is 10 bottles wide, but how many rows of 10 do we have? Ah, you can't cheat. You can't cheat. It's a very slim shelf. It's sturdy, but it will only hold 10. All right, let's keep going. Because uh, much of the discussion is about each of them and what could potentially replace it tonight. On my perma shelf in 2022, this was my pick as the Guardian of Isla, Ardbeg 10. I know Ardbeg gets a hard time, often deservedly so, but I think we would be pretty petty to give them a hard time for their 10-year-old. Arguably... It's kind of gone off the boil a wee bit of occasion, but in recent years, to me, this bottle I've got right now, the one that I've replaced was fabulous. I'm enjoying this one too. Our big 10 remains rock solid. Still floating around the 50 pounds price point. A natural presentation. They tell us that it's unchill filtered on the label. They put an age statement on there. They give us it a 46% ABV, but yet again, they don't put the words natural color on there for whatever reason. It made the perma shelf back in 2020. 
two. I'm suddenly nervous, actually, that one of the bottles I wanted to speak about isn't here. But I know I looked it out. Where are you? It's crucial because it's part of the 2022. If I looked it out and I've misplaced it, I could put up a screen saying, be right back. But I'll ask you to chat among yourselves while I grab the missing bottle. Yeah, I'm still here. I know the bottle is here. No, it's here. It's here. Just turned around the wrong way. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> I thought the wheels had fallen off for a minute. I went over to the section where I keep it. I'm looking at it. There's a space there. I know I've pulled it away. It must be somewhere. It is here, but it's facing the wrong way. It's a blunder. And also, I'm going to blame a rebranding to slightly change the aesthetic I was looking for. My goodness. Thank you for indulging me while I did. That's a terrible thing you have to do to walk away. However, last time I think the way I treated this, and that it will be the same for a couple of picks tonight, is that I just went in and said, pick any one of these you like. And I maintain that. This is Loch Lomond. This is their 12-year-old. Specifically, look down here uh, underneath that label. It says Inchmurrin. This is their kind of fruitier, sweeter, fruitier style, I would say. They've also got Inchmurrin, which is peatier. And then you've got the original, which has got a wee bit of peat and a wee bit of fruit, and it's kind of somewhere in between the two. Arguably, I think I've been a wee bit drawn, more drawn to the original recently, but I poured a dram of this setting up earlier earlier in the week to, to talk about this topic, just to remind myself about this. And I said, no, let's just keep it with an inch uh, Murren for tonight. I think that might have been what happened. I'm looking for the red label and I'm looking at green here. I think that's why I couldn't see it sitting right here next to me and thinking it's missing. Roger Dram is saying, as a newish under a year drinker, my perma shelf bottle is going Canum 10, Aaron 10, but now having 12, our big 10, PC 10, Royal Brackler 12, interesting pick, Coquerin 12, interesting pick, Ben Romack 15, excellent, and TBBSW as well as McLean's Nose. You're, you're knocking out of the park. Listen, add that please in the comments below as well. A couple of really interesting picks there tonight, and one or two that I won't be mentioning myself. David Lorenko is saying, a misplaced bottle in such a big collection is a lost bottle. I was panicking there. I thought I'd done it all, and I really had, but I think maybe a mix of it facing the wrong way, being right in front of me instead of hiding in a, in a mix, and maybe in my head I was looking for the Red Label original. Making a lot of good excuses, right? I hope they stick with you. Graham Fraser is saying, hey there, Aquaviti and Barflies, that's me. Just finished a late shift and heading home on the bus. Graham Fraser's either always here, if he's not here, he finds a way to be here on a train, on a bus, or a, a, one of the eyes on the chat a, from the from whatever event or what he's, he's, whatever he's getting up to. Graham, it's nice to welcome you in, buddy. Cheers to you with this, this Deanston 12. Okay, let's keep going. This is the 2022 shelf, by the way. Um, we've got the Deanston. Next up was, and look at this, I've got a klaxon going off here, I've got an alarm happening, this needs replaced, post haste. This is Craig Elahy's 13, getting a lot of airtime right now, quite incredible, now that it's been around a long time, It's the grind has been done by the guys up at Dewar's, Bacardi Dewar's, and everybody's starting to really enjoy Craig Elahy 13. It's pretty hard to get my camera to focus on the thing right enough, but I'll do my best, there we go. Fully natural product, tells us that it's unchill filtered in the label, tells us 46% ABV and fantastic teenage age statement at 13 years old, floating around the £50 mark for most of us, where we are in the UK. Easy to pick, uh, I think it's only gotten better over the years, honestly speaking, uh, a wonderful, uh, weighty, silky textured uh, Speyside malt whiskey. In a region with so many distilleries, it can be hard. There's just not enough good stuff to come out of there. Ben Romack, Craig Elihy, Spayburn. Um, there are there are other distilleries, Glen Elihy. There are distilleries there that's doing it right, doing it faithfully. Um, but in the region like Speyside, you would expect a wee bit more of it, 
more work could be done there, I think, honestly speaking. Craig Elliffy, Craig Elliffy is an absolute cracker. Let's try and move this so that we can fit them all in. Ten bottles, remember. They're all going to fit, more or less, they'll fit on. One more. Almost Speyside, Eastern Highlands. Uh, this made it in because I needed a sherry pick in there. I don't remember how I justified this wee bottle back in 2022, but it, it made it there. And this was Glendronach's 12-year-old. Now, this is almost a natural whiskey because there have been times in the past that they may have chosen not to chill filter it. But most of the times today, 43%, I guarantee you they're still chill filtering it. Or they're, ch they're at least filtering it more aggressively than they otherwise might. <laughs> uh, at 43%, I think you have to because there's a high risk of it clouding. There's a high risk of flocculation. There's a high risk of people picking it up and saying, why is my whiskey cloudy? So the statement's been removed for a reason. They say they haven't changed anything and that was always done. I guess it's based on your, their interpretation of chill filtration. But to mine, if it's reduced in any measure from ambient, you're chilling it. Uh, and that's unfortunately does happen. It depends on the batch that's happening at Glendronach. 43% ABV is not, it's understood, it's understood. Listen, I'm not being... There are lots of uh, whiskies out there that are not natural, either because they are below 46% ABV or they're above 46% ABV, but they're still chill filtered. Happens a lot. We can still enjoy the whiskies. We have to go on our palate. We have to go on the engagement and things. But as you move along your whiskey journey, the further you move along your whiskey journey, you realise that the majority of your best experiences have been with natural whiskey. And the ones that have not been natural, they have been chill filtered, that you still loved, 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 it leaves you thinking, oh, would I love that a wee bit more if they just left it alone? Listen, uh, it's the nature of things. Uh, the more transparency though, that we can have, the better. Uh, this made it into the perma shelf in 2022. So what are we at now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three more to go. I'll come to those in a wee second. Gav Strams is Gav's here. He's saying my perma shelf is Springbanks, back from all except to 25 and 30. I know, bad. You can come in here and show off anytime you like, Gav. It's wonderful to have you, buddy. Clits to saying three out of six for me so far. Craig Elliott 13 is one of the few bottles I've bought replacements of. So it's, that tells me, Clits, that it's not just me. Danny Hemmington is saying, shh, let's keep Craig Elliott 12. Oh, maybe you meant to say 13 to ourselves. Uh, there is that, but come on, there's only 400 of us in tonight. There's not many. There's plenty to go around. 400 folk, right? Chris Key saying Aaron 10, uh, Port Charlotte 10, Deanston 12, Kilkerran 12, Arbeck 10, Compass Box, Orchard House, Spinromic, Cast Strength, Tullibardin 15. Excellent, interesting pick. Spayburn 15 and Aaron Sherry Cask. Again, Chris, uh, that's that's an incredible list. A couple of interesting picks in there as well. Aaron Sherry Cask, Tully, Tully 15. Um, if, you, if you're mindful enough to remember, put it in the comments below so that it's here for posterity. Fantastic. Wally Buchanan is in. Good to see you, Wally. Hope you're keeping well. How's Morag? Hey, how's the boy, Colin? Hey, wonderful to welcome you. Saying hi, Ryan, all the bad flies. Happy February. It's been a hard sitting back of the classroom without a dram. <sighs> been doing dry January as well, Wally. It's good to have you back. It's good to have you in front of the class as well. Um, again, I mentioned a wee bit about the dry January, happy February thing. I'm kind of glad to get January out of the way because it always feels to me like it's the Monday of the year, right? It's just like kind of that. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, that really dreary month, I'm glad to see the back of it. It's nice to drive the kids to school in the morning in daylight. That's wonderful. Aye, fat fingers, says Danny Hevington. He did mean Craig Alachie 13. And Red Mordecai is saying, I've been enjoying the Glen Murray signature. First Felix Bourbon. Oh, well, now you're talking, Reb. non chill filled 48% ABV. But why, oh why, have they added E150A? Big shame. It's like they almost get there, right? 48% ABV. Stats on the cask and everything. It's just, just everything. Per and then, oh, colouring it. Why? Because it sells. Unfortunately, it sells. That's why they're colouring it, Re Reb. Um, David Evans is saying, shared a 22-year-old Glen Farkless 105 on Christmas Day. Best whiskey experience of my life. Don't care if it was chill filtered or coloured. David Evans, 22-year-old Glen Farkless 105. Even at 22 years old, still 60% ABV 105. Um, did I miss? Uh, I think I have missed a drum in. 
from Jimmy Leg. I can't be missing drams. That's not good. Jimmy saying in honor of the permashelf tonight, I'm drinking two bottles that are as far from permashelf as possible: the Barfly Loch Lomond and the Springbank Cage Bottle. My life is going okay. Jimmy, see as long as you're enjoying your drams, you can drink whatever you like, buddy. Thank you for buying me a dram as well. Thank you for enjoying that Loch Lomond, buddy, too. Cheers, Jimmy Leg. I missed a couple of other wee celebrations coming in too. Uh, Levitsvatten, it looks like, in Norway. Levitsvatten. Uh, sorry for making a mess of your name, my friend. Nice to welcome you in from Norway. He's saying greetings from Norway, Skal, and cheers. Hey, thank you very much for your dram. That looks like a new name. Could be the first time I've welcomed you in. I'm sorry it took me so late to get to your dram. Cheers. Gerben has gifted five Aquavitae Barfly memberships. So generous of you, Gerben. Thank you so much. And James DeGiulio is celebrating being a member for 12 months. He said, well, it's two years and counting. Hey, James, I know you've been around for longer than that, my friend. Good to have you. And Danny Keenan also celebrating being a member for 12 months, saying the time flies when you're having fun. Cheers, Roy. Barflies, aye. Danny Hebbington has just gifted 10 Aquavitae Barfly memberships. I think the idea there is that, you know, you get access to your wee emoji and things like that and you can actually use them and hopefully you stick around and you get a bit of fun out of it and, and continue to support the content whiskey butt is saying i'm surprised no one has mentioned old pony 12 and far as little as 26 pounds on offer yeah i think i was caught out whiskey butt if, uh, if i'm honest about old pony 12 and i don't want to belittle any product that's maintained that price point over the years but i remember a time when i was uh, i dearly loved old pony 12 and you could argue that it's me that's changed rather than the whiskey that's changed. But in recent years, I've had some subpar old Pulteney uh, 12s that were really, really very spirity that tells me that maybe that they've been forced to use uh, less distinguished stock um, in order to meet that price point, to keep it at that price point. Um, it's one of the cheapest age statement whiskies that's out there at 40% ABV, minimum ABV as well. And it, sometimes it can just struggle to hold up to other things but we're being very petty if we're able to pick it up at 25 26 pounds you know it's how can we and if it is potentially lowering that bottom rung of the ladder down to bring people into malt whiskey we would be really quite uh, petty to uh, to knock it i think glad you're enjoying it whiskey but and i don't I hope it's not the first time I've welcomed you in. If it is, it's good to have you. Brian Storm is saying, brought one bottle of Glendronic 12 Aquavita and it was corked. Emailed to complain, but never got a reply. So took the full huff and never bought another. Oh, Brian, I'm really sorry to hear that. It is possible for bottles to be corked. You need to go back to the retailer that sold you, though, rather than back to the producer. Hey, that's poor for, for Glendronic that he didn't respond to you. Whiskey Weekend Dram is saying, if I had one Springbank 10, I had 10 PC 10. Lot of, lot of repetition here, right? Lag Kilmory, interesting. Old Pulteney 12, Ben Romack 10, Kleinleash 14, Legic 10, Coquerin 8, and Talisker 10. What a smashing, smashing list, Harold. Put it in the comments underneath, buddy. I've got three more to share with you to remind you all what 2022's Perma Shelf was made up of. We had a blended malt in the mix, too. We had Compass Box's Orchard House. That was very of the time. I can't remember if it came out in 2021 or 2022 Orchard House, but it took its place by storm. People loved it. People loved the freshness, the sharpness, the, that little bit of smoke at the tail end. Uh, anybody that loved a spirit-forward fruity whiskey was lapping up Orchard House. People that liked sherry cask and sweeter, fuller, richer, denser whiskies maybe struggled a wee bit more with it. The people that liked spirit-forward fruity whiskies loved, 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 in my experience, loved the Orchard House. It made my perma shelf back in 2022. Much like the Loch Lomond, pick any of the core ranges you like, Lynchmoren, Inchmoren, or the original, the 12 year old stuff. This one, I, had, I said the same. This is Ardemurchen. If I didn't talk about Ardemurchen tonight, I think you would decide that something was a wee bit suspicious. How can I bang on about Ardemurchen? all the year and then suddenly not talk about it when we're talking about the perma shelf. Uh, listen, this just happens to be a random bottle I picked up. In 2022, it was the cast strength I used as an example. But any core range Ardemurkin you like, anyone you like, they will be very different from each other. <laughs> not very different. They will be Ardemurkin. 
but they will be a wee bit different. That's okay. Stuff that's coming out of the West of Scotland distillery is exemplary. The fact that we're picking up mostly at five, six years old of that order right now, it just makes us so, so excited for the future. It was a very easy pick for me. To the point that if you were ever to ask, do you replace it? Here's one here on the go. This is the new branding with the embossed logo on the front. Uh, here's a backup bottle ready to go. This is the 072105, which I think is a an exact backup of that one. I must have liked that one. Here's a an original one, an 092001 with still a wee bit left in it. And there's more up there. Why am I buying so many of the same whiskey? It's a privilege to be able to follow the development of a brand new distillery that just burst onto the scene in 2020. I've always said, imagine going back to 1824 and getting to try the first ever Glenlivet. Can you imagine? It wouldn't have been called Glenlivet back then. It would have been Drimmon or, or something like that, or Minmore. <laughs> It'd have been a different malt, but we would have been able to try it at a very young age. Imagine getting back, being able to go back to 1816 or maybe 1820, 1822, 1823, something like that, and taste five or six year old Lagavulins. It just it it would be beyond privilege, right? Well, we can do that today with so many new distilleries. I'm loving monitoring the development of Glen Glenwivis. Kings Barnes, Lindors, Loch Lee, Ardemarchen, Glasgow's recent developments. The list goes on. This is this is a treat time. And I know that there's a lot of choice out there. We're spoilt for choice. We're saturated. There's so much choice. It's incumbent upon the producers to bring their absolute best value proposition. The best whiskey, the best presentation, the best price. Don't mess around. Don't cut corners, don't cheat. You'll be found out and you'll be struggling. Your bottles will get dusty on the shelf rather than being drunk and enjoyed and talked about loudly. That's why I have so many bottles of Ardemarkin on the shelf and open because I'm a geek and I love sipping and contrast and tasting the different batches and considering how it might be developing. Any Ardemarkin you like, I've picked a core range tonight. I think it's very, very valid. 45, 48 pounds. It's absolutely worth your time too. One more bottle, and that's us made our perma shelf from 2022. And it was a blend. But it was the most interesting blend that, in my opinion, exists. Yeah, this was Glasshouse. 46% um, ABV blend, very lightly coloured, doesn't say anything about natural colour, but hopefully you can see just how pale this whiskey is. I think if they do put any colour on this, it's the merest dot. But this is actually a blended Scotch whiskey, but it should say single blend, because everything in this is from the same distillery. We understand it to be made at Loch Lomond. It's probably the only distillery in Scotland that could make this at this volumes. And at this price point, first started buying this at £26. It's sitting about 33 34 now. £26 was the offer price. Uh, standard price is 30 32 33 of that order. And it disappeared for a long time. I think it's back now. But it did disappear. 46% malt whiskey from a pot still, blended with malt whiskey through a coffee still. So we know it to be Loch Lomond. Loved this stuff. Everybody I shared this with was surprised, often really impressed most of the time went out and bought a bottle. And there we have it, 2022's Perma Shelf. Why have I spent all of this time on the VPUB sharing what I shared with you in 2022? Well, here comes the challenge. Now, here comes the challenge on all of us. I'm going to go through those and remove the ones that I have reflected upon and want to change in 2024 give you my reasons and my justification, and it's very, very tr tricky. It's very difficult. Menno is here. He's listing Inchmore in 12. Excellent, but Romac 10, or 10 cast strength, or or the, I guess it's not always 10. It's a vintage now, isn't it? But yeah, the modern cast strength, fantastic. Springback 10, Buna 12, Ardbeg 10, Port Charlotte 10, going Carob 10, Elijah Craig. Ooh, I like where you're going here. I've, I've focused fully on scotch for the perma shelf. Cheating. 
It's easy to pick 10 bottles if I narrow it down to a single category, my comfort zone. Uh, Indri Trini, fantastic. And as of today, Teeling Single Malt. He's enjoying an Irish single malt as well. A lot of people speaking very positively about the new latest malts coming out of Teeling. Good one. Matt Horsham is saying there's a few trends coming out. Try to keep one per distillery and no spring bank or cocaine because availability. Tell you another sh a trend that's happening as well, Matt. A lot of people are giving up their touchscreens, their smartphones and their tablets and they're using keyboards instead. How's that keyboard going for you tonight? Easier for you to chat, buddy. I hope you're enjoying it. Nice to have you in. Sandro Fatsalari saying, you're so right. I only have two Ardemarkins. Love them both. Sherry Cask AD 09 2022. I'm glad you're loving them too. Rob Smith is here saying Ardemarkin AD. Core range. PC. PC10, poor Charlotte 10, poor Charlotte 10, poor Charlotte 10. Uh, so many people saying that. Uh, Lefroy 10, uh, Cast Strength, specifically Cast Strength, Glen Scotia 18, ooh, premium one. Buna having 12, Buna having 12 Cast Strength, Craig Gallagher 13, Edward R. Caledonia, 12 year old, Coquerin 12, and Glen Scotia Victoriana. <sighs> you like the flavoursome stuff, Rob. You like the dense stuff. Inverary Whiskey Shop is saying that's released for cocktails by the guys at Orchard Bar in Aberdeen Glasshouse. Yeah, Langstein, I believe. I do believe it's back after a wee break. Glad to have it back. Uh, Inverary Whiskey Shop, I'd love to have a name to put to that. I know your face. But I'm delinquent and I apologise for that. Um, and I'm glad to have it back. It might be one of the first ones to my Horsham is saying bra. <laughs> Maybe one of the first ones uh, that's easy to put in the sites tonight because of its intermittent availability. Brian Cabayas is saying I might have Glenn Marnock from Aldi as one of my permashelf for this year. And Frank Peterhead is saying, for the record, my permashelf only has a few, our big 10, spring back 10, Craig Early 13, and Port Askig 100 proof. The rest is never changing, mostly single cast stuff. That Port Askig is now discontinued, buddy. But the good news is the cast strength has come along to plug the gap. So we're, look, we're being looked after. Graham Young has bought me a dram. Right, a four out of seven so far for my perma shelf. That's no bad, Graham. Let's agree on that. Uh, comparatively, a taxi on a wee well turkey 101. Okay, it is, yeah. Um, well, turkey, if I was opening it up beyond scotch, yeah, it was absolutely a strong, strong argument. Port Charlotte 10, Ben Romack 10, and with 15, I'd be happy. Uh, Arna cast strength, and I'd be done. <laughs> So this is the pragmatism coming now, right? Thank you for the dram, Graham. Thank you so much, my friend. If we were to only have the permashelf to see us through forever, is it sufficient to help us cope? I think so. I really believe that it is. Look at this coming in from Bruno Martins in Portugal. It's very similar. Lots of repetition. This is gold for the community. This is gold for people coming in. Deanston 12, Glencarum 10, Legic 10, Port Charlotte 10, Lachlan 12, and Schmorin, Kriyalki 13, Edradar 10, Edradar 10 is lower ABV right enough, Kilkerran 12, Glengarry 12, and Aaron Quarter Cask. So much overlap, lots of interesting suggestions in there too. Let's level up. This was 2022. We're in 2024 now. Some things have changed. Not a lot. It's the perma shelf. Surely it's supposed to be permanent. No, the, the shelf is permanent, but we're fickle. We're not loyal. We're loyal while we're having fun. We're loyal while we're enjoying it and we're being treated fairly with integrity and with flavor and with good value. And as soon as that stops happening or something becomes less accessible, well, it's easy for other things to come in and take the space. I had to sit down and go through, and honestly, the bottles I've got here seems like I don't know how I'm going to get through this in the next 40 minutes, an hour. But I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get through it quite quickly. I had to pare this down, and I still have lots of challengers here. Challengers looking for a space on this 10-bottle perma shelf. But I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about accessibility. I'm going to talk about flavour, more recent experiences. I'm going to talk about fairness. I'm going to talk about value price, value price, value price. I'm going to talk about all of this stuff. And I'm going to talk about how easy it is for us to recommend to a friend. Let's take away the first 
bottle. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to pick a, a bottle. And I'm going to hold it up. And I'm going to share whether or not it's going to be put aside and doesn't make the perma shelf or whether it does make the perma shelf. If it does make the perma shelf, something has got to be removed. Something's got to be demoted. It's brutal. Absolutely brutal. Uh, just let me make this text bigger so I can read it with these glasses on easily. I'm going to talk about the Guardian of Isla first. I'm going to look at this Ardbeg 10 here. 50 quid. I've already summarised it. Love it. Told you why it's there in 2022, and I stand by it in 2024. <laughs> but there are some big hitters coming after it here today. Isla Malt Whiskey has this kudos, this premium associated with it. To the point that when we have, even today, a Kalila, single cask of Kalila, we can often see it very expensive. 12 years old, it can easily approach £100 and break £100 in 2024 for a single cask of Kalila. Now, that's not what we're talking about tonight. It's single cask. It's different. But Isla Malt Whiskey is becoming expensive. So it's nice when we get some things that come across that's reasonably within reach and affordable. Let's grab my Isla whiskies, my pretenders, and let's talk about them one by one. There is another one here I'm going to leave out and talk about a wee bit later. Let's talk about the threats to potentially maybe Ardbeg's position on this perma shelf. Let's talk about, somebody mentioned the 100 proof from Port Askeg. Here I have the eight-year-old. Camera, can you focus? Yes, thank you. Uh, this is 45.8% uh, ABV, just out of coincidence, the same ABV that Talisker use. I don't think there's any reason for that other than... But I believe it to be a fully natural product. They don't colour this stuff. They certainly keep it unchill filtered, uh, and it, it tends to be pretty good value as well for a strong performance. But more recently, I mentioned that the 100 proof version has been discontinued but instead we have this is shocking to me I'm standing here telling you how uh, how careful I've been and how I've not been doing a lot of drinking over Christmas well um I can tell you that this bottle has been purchased during those uh, months the December January months I think this was launched in November I think I might have picked this up in November I've been early December not sure this is another Port Askig, and this is the one that replaces that 100 proof. This is their cask strength version, and uh, it's a small batch release. This is the small batch 01 2023, and this happens to come out at 59.4%. So with it being their cask strength, I imagine batch by batch, the ABV is going to fluctuate. Not all Port Askigs are from Kalila in Port Askig. Not all of them are. Some of them are from other Isla distilleries. But all of the Port Askigs say Isla single malt scotch whiskey on the bottle. Depending on the expression, it's uh, different prices. Uh, the eight-year-old is reasonably priced. I think it's sub £50. This cast strength one is £65 of that order, I think. Uh, they've actually got a 17-year-old, and I succumbed. I purchased the Port Askig 17-year-old as well. £122. Probably £20 too expensive in my book, but I was sorely, sorely tempted, based on nothing more than the good experience, the reassurance that these bottlings and other Port Askigs have given me. If you happen across Port Askigs and you like that light, silver, clean Isla style, I know I've said they're not always Kalila, but most of them are. The ones in front of me right now, I'm sorry that I happen to know that these are Kalila. If you like that style and you like it with integrity, if you like that fresh, sweet, smoky Isla style, you're not going to be let down by, by poor asking. The only trouble you would have recommending these is you would have to consider your audience. It has to be somebody that likes this style of whiskey or indeed somebody that likes Ardbeg 10. These will not 
be quite strong enough yet to replace our Big Ten. Why? Our Big Ten have, has got a consistency right now, a quality right now, a natural presentation right now, and a global availability. The, uh, the Port Askigs are huge outturns. They're decent outturns. They should be available to most people, but patchy. Some people, it's a non-age statement they'd have to pick up. Some people, they'd get still get the 100 proof. Some, it's just going to be a wee bit all over the place. I'm putting in a, a, an upvote here for Port Asking in a very general sense. And in all my experience with it, whether it's the absolutely gorgeous 10th anniversary, some of the more expensive, pricey treat bottles with a higher age statement on it, it doesn't matter what it is. I've always had a very good experience with Port Askings. But there's another one that could threaten the spot, and you've talked about it loudly tonight. If I was to put this to a vote right now, can I put a poll out there right now? Let's see. Start a poll. All I'm going to do is ask a question. What's the guardian of Isla? I predict we might disagree on this. Our big 10. Port Charlotte. 10. Start poll. There we go. So you can just vote. Hopefully that po that, that's going to pop up and you can just vote. So what I'm suggesting to you is I have already picked mine and I'm going to stick with mine. I'm going to stick with my decision, but I think it's useful to the community to see just how many people are going to agree or disagree with my pick. But I can tell you just now that these two are replacing what I used to consider the Guardian of Isla. Back in the day, it was Lagavulin 16. Used to be able to pick up Lagavulin 16, sub 60 pounds. We forgave it the fact that it was potentially coloured, 43% ABV, certainly chill filtered, but we loved that whiskey and it gave us this accessible 16 year old age statement, Isla Single Malt from that wonderful distillery Lagavulin. But Diageo just went all nuts, didn't they? And they just they listened to feedback saying that Lag Lagavulin 16 was too cheap. and. Oh yeah, okay, so they're not making money on it for selling it all those years at that price, whatever. Oh, it makes every other whiskey look expensive. Just nonsense, just anyway, it's gone out there, the RRP is up at £85, and now it's become the whiskey that's permanently on sale and nowhere near the perma shelf. A whiskey that I have a lot, a lot to, to I'm in debt to that whiskey for my whiskey journey generally. But now I've become ambivalent. If I run out of Lagavulin 16, sorry, there's other things to have taken its place. Whiskey Wings, celebrating being a member for 34 months. Thank you, Mike, for your support, my friend. The Mactala Mara is often overlooked a bargain. An interesting one too. Mactala is, is a range, is something that I should, I keep hearing from you and that's why it's such a bi-directional thing. I should be listening to you a lot more. So many of you are talking about Mactala. It's a wee bit parochial in terms of distribution. I don't know how much Mactala is making it to the States. I might be wrong there. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully most of the picks I'm going to have tonight is going to have quite a wide distribution. Right, so along the same Colula 12, again, a wee bit similar to Lagavulin, a bit cheaper, of course, 43% ABV presentation. Depends on what you mean by Guardian. A Guardian is that thing that's just somebody says to you, Give me an example of Isla whiskey that I can go out and buy and enjoy. What's that going to what's going to give me that Isla experience, that malt with that very classical Isla experience? And I think it's easy to argue that either either of these would. I'll leave that poll running for a wee while, but I'm going to tell you that I stuck with our big 10. There's an argument that I shouldn't have. But I'd, for the Port Charlotte 10, I need to spend a wee bit more money, eight to 10 pounds more expensive for this. They do give us something back in return for that. Absolute transparency and extra ABV. This is 50% ABV. But for me, the profile is just, when you set them side by side, the profile, I know that this Port Charlotte is gonna suit certain people more than the Ardbeg. For me, the Ardbeg is a little bit more Without getting into the weeds about it, an individual isolated tasting notes, the Ardbeg comes across as a much cleaner refill 
ex-bourbon cask type experience, whereas the Port Charlotte has got more kind of fruit and tannin and farming notes in there, a little bit more lactic as well. So if you're looking for something a bit more complex and a bit more kind of something that's going to dart about all over the map, the flavour map, Port Charlotte is like that. Lots of density there too, really quite thick and just a gorgeous dram, really is. Um, but the Ardbeg is just a cleaner, more classic style. But it's very, very tough for me to choose between the two. And if it comes down to looking at price and what I picked in 2022, has enough of that changed in the two years? Not really. The other shenanigans that's gone on at Ardbeg, notwithstanding, it holds its place. But I suspect you guys are going to disagree with me and pull up this poll. Click on it. By quite a margin. By quite a margin. 187 of you have out of uh, how many of you? 427 of in. Uh, some of you are watching without the comments up or whatever. You can't participate. I understand that. But that's amazing. Uh, close on half the, of, of you watching have taken place and you voted at 58% to 42% in favour of Port Charlotte 10. That's super valuable because you're not just listening to one guy. You're listening to an entire community. That's not favoritism. That's not people making hard decisions. What you're looking at with that poll is consensus. And I hope that's valuable to you. And the consensus chooses the Port Charlotte for the perma shelf over the Ardbeg. It's an argument. I should do that too. So will we end that poll? Or will we leave it going for a wee bit? We'll keep it going until I need to replace it with something else. How about that? I need something else in my glass. And I'm going to stay. So this is still intact. All of these things have pulled up so far. Nothing's budged at the perma shelf. But something's going to come loose now. Because so I'm going to go back to that Isla whiskey. And I'm going to talk about this belter. Uh, What the price is this? Did I check the price of this recently? Let's uh, pick a, uh, any retailer you like. Okay. This is cheaper than what I thought it once was. When I was speaking about this last year, I suggested it was more expensive, maybe based on the price I paid at the time or whatever, but it's certainly available a wee bit cheaper now. A lot of you are going to recognise this wee purple top, right? And know exactly what I've just poured into the glass. Yes, I'm I've just poured a PT one. And a lot of you have realised exactly what it is right now. This is going to make it onto that perma shelf. I, I can't tell you how happy I am that this Sanic has become a fully matured, stable, interesting product. Like so many Kohomans, I think they, in the early days, they were a little bit up and down. When we talk about batch variation and, and uh, embracing that, we, we always have to remember that the minimum offering, it can't drop below a minimal, a minimum quality offering. And I'm not suggesting that the quality dropped, but for me, a lot of the Cohomans, the Machir Bay, the earlier Machir Bays, the earlier Sanix, um, they were just still quite spirity and a wee bit rough and a wee bit ready and a wee bit jaggy and a wee bit... I could still enjoy them, sure. But me recommending it loudly is a very different thing. And uh, that, that was always having to be contextual. That's not the case anymore. What's it going to replace on the shelf? Something has to disappear. This is rich, really rich. It's the exact opposite of that Isla uh, Guardian uh, profile I was talking about with the Port Charlotte and Ardbeg and the, that kind of cleaner style. This is this is a, a richer thing. This is a mix of ex-bourbon, first of all bourbon, and also some sherry casts in here too. This is their more sherried style in their core range. Like your base, all ex-bourbon, this is... Lots of rich fruit in here, lots of dark fruit, lots of peaty, smoky, smoked, boozy, soaked raisins. A wee bit of chocolate, milk chocolate. Wonderfully heady and aromatic and smoky. You know, I've got peat blight. Sometimes I stick my 
nose in a smoky dram and I don't pick up this. My brain is just cancelled out the smoke, but there's no way you can cancel out the smoke on this. It's that peat and smoke and, and sherry thing that just people love. No age statement on this, but suddenly you're not sipping it and thinking, oh, youth, youth, youth. I think it's transcended that phase now. It's stable now. It's just fully integrated and together. It's just a good rock solid Isla, Isla whiskey. So the only question is, I've got to put this wee dumpy fat bottle on the shelf. What's it going to replace? I'm going to take an easy shot at this one. I already talked about the glass house and I already talked about how it had disappeared. It was something I was recommending, recommending, and it just suddenly disappeared. And it seems quite an interesting wee makeup through Langstein, how that, how that maybe it's a contract based thing or whatever, but it's not available to everybody everywhere all the time. And I think the reason, one of the reasons I might have been putting this on my perma shelf back in 2022 is because I really wanted to champion that promiscuity towards. And that open-mindedness, sorry, towards accepting blends and how amazing they could be. I still stand by this glass house. And if I happen a, 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 a upon this in a shop or a, online or whatever, I think I'm probably going to pick up a replacement to this bottle. This is the last liquid I have of this in the house now. My personal shelf collection, I want to have this replaced and back again. But if I'm going to choose things to recommend to you for the perma shelf. The glass house is making space for Colholman. And deservedly so. I want to thank you all in the community for banging on about this for so long and so loudly that I listened. Admittedly, not until the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards in 2023. <laughs> it took me a while, but I did go back and buy another bottle of Sanic. And you're spot on. You're absolutely right to the point that this is the second bottle since the Oz was. Now, I do give a lot away. I've got a pal who happens to love Colhoman, and he was grinning like a Cheshire cat when I was gushing about Colhoman. Um, yes, this is a bi directional relationship. Your opinion matters so, so much. Please share it. Justin Wani said, I've never seen a glass house. I know, Justin, you're in Hong Kong. It's very unlikely that you would, I think. Told you years ago, uh, lol, Whiskey with Molly is, could be talking about glass house, but he's more likely talking about Colholm and Sanic. Ben, I've no doubt that you absolutely did. Glass house is £25, and I always buy it when I see it. Ben, that means a lot. Fantastic. So I think when you're talking about telling me, then I think you must mean the Colholm. And I think you were here for the fundraiser when Glasshouse was in the blind lineup, and it was joint first. Never listen to us, we're crazy, says Jimmy Legg. <laughs> but Black Fen is saying Glasshouse is lovely, but I can't get it anymore. Ben's Cape Mountain now occupies the easy summer pour slot on my perma shelf. I was in Good Spirits Company today, and Matthew reminded me, have you tried that Ben's Cape Mountain for green whiskey? And I said, aye, but uh, I didn't pick it up today. I didn't pick up a fresh bottle of Bain's Cape Mountain. I'm glad you're enjoying it as well. And Connor, that means a lot that you are uh, enjoying it and recommending it too. It's not expensive. It's very inexpensive too. Whiskey Wings Mike is saying, really good point you raised there. Probably a separate discussion entirely. Smoke blindness. I find my brain kind of skips past mild smoke. Note to the extent I have to hunt it out. Can I, can I make a confession to you, Mike? Sometimes I'll be sipping a dram and I'll be, oh, and I'll just pass it to one of my kids or my wife and say, is there smoke in this? And they, they go, <laughs> yes, it's very smoky, that. But at Highland Park levels and things, I just, I'm not getting it. What I tend to have to do is get a wee cover and take the empty glass, the empty glass, cover the empty glass, and then go back to it and do that. And when it's an empty glass, for whatever reason, those fennels do express themselves. You can, there's obviously a smoky element. But sometimes with a liquid, when there's lots of other things to pick out, chocolates and fruits and floral elements and everything else, you, you, your brain is already just kind of, it's like spicy food when it dials out the spice or ginger root or all of these kind of really overt flavors. Your brain is very good at learning to just process. 
That's my excuse. A lot of us here are smoking peat blind. It's a bit sad, actually. But it's easy to correct. I say easy to correct. It's quite, it's very quickly to lose it again. But if you go off peaty smoky whiskies for a while and just drink light and fruity or you take a break altogether, I guarantee you all the people that's doing dry January, if they pick up an Isla whiskey right now, bang, they're going to get it. But our brain will probably dial up down or cancel it out very, very even quicker than it has in the past. So we need to kind of work and keep our palate fresh and and find ways. Uh, not everybody will suffer from peat blindness, uh, peat blight, but I do. Excess to Scotch is saying even in the Netherlands there is no glass house. Oh, wow. And if the Dutch can't get it, it's really parochial. So there's another reason for it to have disappeared, but it's nice for me to talk about it for the people that do see it. It's absolutely a wholehearted recommendation. Especially if Ben's picking it up for £25, I would be quite happy to pay 33 34 for that wee whiskey. All right, let's pick up some more threats to our power shelf here. I think a weak spot here is this. Come on, let's be honest. It's 2024, what's the zeitgeist for product? Natural, transparent. Tell us what's in the liquid. Be truthful. Do your best. Do your best. Do your best. Don't chase sales through lack of understand, lack of knowledge. Chase sales and reputation through integrity and education. It's not what's happening here from Brown Foreman, unfortunately. Um, I don't know. I can't speak for when it was owned by the Ben Riak company, Billy Walker's, uh, under his tenure beforehand. But these days that we know that there's a very, very high chance that certainly this 12-year-old is going to be chill-filtered. Whatever. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. There are some people out there that will argue, no, 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 they don't chill-filter it. I'm telling you they do. They need to put it on the label regardless. And if they have taken it off the label, that's because they're worried about compliance. And that means that they do. So it's easy to take a look at this and say, this is not bad whiskey. Arguably, this is good whiskey. And I'll go one further than that and say, if we're talking about bringing people into the whiskey scene and they're interested in something with a bit of sherry in it, this is a rock solid, easy recommendation to make. But it's under threat these days. I'm even willing to spend a bit more to get more power and impact. Nobody's going to be surprised that I am reaching out to you with this. I'm becoming a bit trite now in my old age. I don't know. Spayburn 15 again, Roy. Come on, what are you talking about? What are you talking? Well, always I love the love, love, love this. This is absolutely a perma shelf bottle for me. Absolutely. See when this drops down to here. I'll be, whenever I'm passing Good Spirits Company, whenever I'm in a spot where they're selling spape, and I need a spape on 15. That's how much I love this product. But it's not going to take the spot on the perma shelf. Not yet. For one reason. Not for the reason of transparency, because they tell us 15 years age statement, fantastic, 46% ABV. Hey, they tell us on the label that this is non-chill, filtered and natural colour. Tell me that they do. Tell me that it still says that. Does it say it on the back on this one? It used to say it up front and centre. There is this dram is neither chill, filtered nor coloured. It says it on the front label. Full transparency, 15-year-old integrity malt whiskey it's bumped up in price we used to be able to get this for sub 50 pounds those days are gone now it's 60 something pounds now when i started to rave about this it was 50 to 55 it's into the 60s now but come on that's still very good value for this quality of whiskey we just can't argue with it. It's amazing. So why is it not there? We need something sherry forward, something that's not Colholman, that's not peaty. We need something in that perma shelf, surely, when we're in the mood for that Christmas cake experience. Spayburn 15 doesn't get there yet because there is something, something beats it, hands down, on every measurable metric with the exception of age. 
Sandra is saying the best Glendronach I recall was the eight year old The Healing. I luckily have a replacement. What a whiskey. I loved it too. Long gone. Much missed. I wonder if we'll ever see that coming back again, Sandro. I did enjoy. I think was The Healing one of the first ever recycled whiskies I ever threw away. Daniel Caballero is here. Daniel, so good to see you and welcome you back to the VPUB. I'll pick a Glenallachie 12 or Glengarry 12. I think that's absolutely valid, especially the modern Glenallachie 12 is very, very sherry forward. One of the ones that I held in my hands and, and just in, in anxiety saying, how can I not talk about this? Didn't make it to tonight's discussion. That's why the community needs to chime in, uh, Daniel. Good to see you. Uh, sorry, it, wasn't, it was Daniel, yes. Falsgraf is saying 57 euro in Germany. 57 euro for Spayburn 15 is a ridiculously good value. I don't like Christmas or cake. Okay, I like cake. <laughs> Jimmy like. Superb. Listen, I don't know if you've got any a handle on Speyburn 15, but in the category that it lives, in the profile that it lives, it's hard to beat. It's hard to beat. Maybe Glen Turret 12 could take it on, especially the price that it's at now. Glen Turret 12 is a wee bit younger, but the integrity is there. The quality is absolutely there. So I'm holding the Glen Turret in my hand. I'm holding the Speyburn in my hand. And I said, no, I'm going to take the Speyburn. A couple of years of extra age on there and always kind of brings it. Anyway, let's, let me tell you, uh, and I'm going to, I bought this today, so I am literally, when the thing is, is is empty and disappeared, I've got an empty down there on the floor somewhere, maybe it's made it out to the garage for the next recycled review, um, I am buying a replacement. And I went into the Good Spirits Company today and picked this, no, I didn't pick this up. Where's my professionalism? Okay, I've, I've got it down here, don't worry, this is different bottle. So I've just been busted for indulging myself. Actually, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, I'm going to pretend that's not an accident. <laughs> Hold on a second. The exact same package. I mean, the exact, I looked, I opened this up and went, oh, that's the one with the black seal. They've both got perfectly black seals. Anyway, perhaps now you know what this is. Let's reveal the top. There's a wee message on there. It tells you this is from Thompson Brothers. You want your sherry fix? How about a six-year-old that tastes like a 12-year-old or a 16-year-old or certainly much, much older? How about something at 46% ABV? How about something that despite it saying blended Scotch whiskey on the label, you should every, every measure of you should look at this and consider it as malt. This does not sip or taste or feel like a malt whiskey, a, a blended whiskey. It feels every bit like a malt whiskey. And I paid today, I don't remember, less, I didn't even look at the price on this, but it's less than £35 still. £33, £34, £35. There is a six year old age statement on this. This is fully natural colour. This is very sherry forward whiskey. Let's just get this wee thing open because I. I'm drinking and enjoying and sharing this more over the last couple of years that it's been around than anything else. This won the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards Best Blended for a very good reason. You cannot get this drinking experience for this price. But let me tell you why it needs to be in a perma shelf now with a very tongue in cheek nod to the whole concept of a perma shelf. Remember, it's the shelf that's permanent, not the selection. This will not last forever. It cannot last forever. Net pour, straight out the bottle. Oh, okay. Let's give it a wee, wee bit of time. A wee bit sharper, a wee bit, wee bit of a kind of vinegary note, a wee bit acidic there. Often happens, I need to slow down a wee bit. Just let this settle for a second. Over the last two years, the bottles that I have replaced more than anything else is this and Indri Trini. Both are inexpensive bottles, densely flavoured, rich, easy to get people into whiskey, get excited about whiskey, getting them enjoying sipping the whiskey. But they've both been inexpensive and fully natural and transparent. I think it's important. I don't think it's as difficult as a lot of producers are making out. So this 
comfortably and easily. takes our sherry spot in the lineup. I'm quite happy to argue with people. The only way I'm, I'd be willing to say, okay, there's something else, is based on, there is a kind of parochial element to this availability local to me. It's made it to Europe. It's made it beyond. It's probably, hopefully, making it to the States. I also hope it makes it to Canada as well. But yes, there is going to be an availability consideration with this. That said, if you're traveling, if you know someone that's traveling, if you can connect up with somebody in the meal network, throw $40 at this, please. It's just marvelous, privileged liquid to have today. Sherry. Don't make fun of me. Sherry, if you've ever nosed a glass of sherry, everything is here. So that lovely, warming, comforting kitchen space. The dried fruit. The fudgy, chocolatey sweetness. The density. Nobody is picking up grain whiskey on this, on the nose. And if they are, then like the majority of you watching here tonight, you've got a much better nose than I have. No sense of that kind of sharp first balsamic vinegar nose that I got there. Lovely, rich, easy to drink. A bit of vibrance to it, but still remarkably soft too. Remember, we're drinking 46% ABV whiskey. Somebody that doesn't like nippy whiskey, hot whiskey, they want something that's accessible. Just pour this confidently for them. The balsamic note's there, but it's not a sharp. It's not, it's not the, the, I just stuck my nose straight in and got a blast of alcohol, I think. Just terrific, terrific, terrific. To not have that on the perma shelf would be rude. I don't think it's going to last forever. Grab it while you can. Bought the SRV5 a few weeks ago, Aquavite. Uh, I did not see this one in the shop. So Haro in, in the Netherlands, I guess. He's seen the SRV5, which is the eight-year-old, which is all malt. It's blended malt, station road about five. Um, but he didn't see the TB uh, BSW. It's blended Scotch whiskey BSW, yeah. Stuart Peel, good to see you, Stuart. How are you? Just finished a dram of the TB BSW, waiting for Master Malt to get it back in stock to replace it. I'm ripping through it very quickly. So that's good. That's just, there's a bit of consensus happening here. Um Again, I feel like doing another wee poll just for a bit of interaction. Let's try it. Let's end this poll. Port Charlotte remains the winner. Oh, our bigs come back a wee bit, 44% to 56%. But absolutely, the community decides that Guardian of Isla, eh, um tonight is, is Port Charlotte. I defer to your greater knowledge. End poll. Let's bring up another one and ask something. Are you reluctant because the TB BSW is a blend? Yes, no. Stop, Paul. Be honest. If you're nervous that the bl the word blend is there, and if you're all about malts and malt is your bag. You might hear me banging on about open-mindedness and promiscuity and all of those great things. But at the end of the day, if your experiences have told you that malt is where it's at and you don't want to venture into blends, answer truthfully. It'd be interesting to see. I don't want to taint the poll that I've just put out there in the chat, but I'm telling you, if I put this down in front of you blind, you'd have to be Serge Valentin to pick up that this is a blend. What else do we have? We have three more bullets. We've replaced two here. We've got three more. Three more that I thought could be worth replacing one of those bottles behind me on the perma shelf. 
Only one of the three is going to make it through. And this is heart-wrenching for me, and it's even difficult for me to justify it. And it's based on the thinnest level of justification whatsoever, to the point where if you guys weren't here and I was just sitting on my own, this 10 might even change. And if I was just going to suck, draw it all back into just me sitting here in Glasgow, based on my availability rather than yours, it might change. But because I'm speaking to all of you and you're spread all over the world, I need to remember accessibility. Having said that, I've just put up something that I've admitted is parochial. I'm allowed one. I'm allowed one. Bruce Bernard is here saying, after tasting McLean's nose, blend is not a scary word. Fantastic. Glasshouse would do the same. Thompson Brothers TBBSW would do the same. It would have the same impact. The same impact. Ryan Sullivan is saying, producer always helps. Thompson Brothers know their stuff, and I'd like to think that customers can trust my blending when we release products done by us. That's right. You have to you have to know that if you're every release is building, you're grinding it out. It's reputation. It's you want to be trusted. You want to be trusted to the point that even when somebody buys something that doesn't light them up, maybe it doesn't let them down, but it's going to be like maybe a bit more of an average experience. It still doesn't taint your brand in their mind. They still come back for a repeat purchase. Too much of what's happening right now, I don't know how much thought is going into what's going to, what's in this bottle that's going to make someone come back and buy something with this brand again. And I know that it's a lot to do with youth and what's available and certainly a lot to do with price. We need to work together as a community to navigate this difficult time. Not knowledge, Justin Wan is saying, simply preference. Not going to argue with that, Justin. Uh, Daisy is in. Good to see you, Daisy of Leland. Good to always have you here. Good evening, Ryan Barflies. Aquaviti just got home. Well, settle down, pour something nice, and I hope you're comfortable hanging out with us for a wee while, Daisy. I'm hoping to see you in Limburg this year as well. Hemant Kastner is saying TBBSW is a huge hype here in Germany. Some individuals hoard it like 10 bottles each. Crazy times. Oh, come on. Share it out. Speak to those individuals and say, right, you can hoard it. 10 bottles. You can keep 10 bottles. As soon as that dries up and it's not available to anyone anymore and everyone's lamenting it and raving about it, free up your hoard and share it. Oh, no, no. I, it's, it's, no, if you are t keeping 10 bottles, that's just selfish, self... Sorry, just my opinion. Greed. I grabbed my bottle of TBBSW last year in a Good Spirits company. With Peter Lee, says Danny Keenan, great whiskey and great value. Daniel Williams is saying, Thompson Brothers, uh, TBBSW is available in the Netherlands. Van der Heiden, 50 euro, bit steep though. I'm going to be controversial here and say, yes, 50 euro is steep compared to the UK prices. Mm. I'll leave it there. Hopefully that speaks uh, enough volumes for you, Daniel. Ryan Sullivan is saying, uh, sorry, I did pick up that one. An Inverary whiskey shop is saying, if you asked me this two or three years ago, I, I, I'd have said yes. Okay, you're coming round to the blend thing now. Justin Wan, again, never seen it, so don't even have the chance to be reluctant. I know, Justin, I know exactly what you're talking about, but you travel, buddy. You will be able to get this. I've only blended one whiskey, says Jimmy, and it was perfect. <laughs> Inverary Whiskey Shop is saying, everything Jimmy says gives me a chuckle. I love you, big guy. Inverary Whiskey Shop is saying, Berry Brothers blends, Williamson teaspoon blends. Remind, remember, not all blends are actually blends, especially if they say teaspoon. If it says blended malt and the, the, the implication is that it's teaspoon, it's got something else, the chances of it actually having anything else in it is very, very slim. It's, it's a single malt, but they have to label it as such because the paperwork that goes with it is blended. Um, and that the idea there is that you that you want to preserve somebody somewhere is trying to protect their brand. Uh, that's it's, it just makes sense when you think about it. Don't be put off by something that says Williamson. That's Lafroig. It's just Lafroig. An Inverary whiskey shop is absolutely spot on. Blended malt, uh, even a single malt. This Glendronach twelve, it's a blend. Uh, Port Charlotte heavily peated ten. I've got here these Port Askegs, the Speyburn fifteen. They're all blends. Now, they say single malt on the label, but they're a blend of multiple, multiple casks. All the whiskey was made in a single location, so single stays. It's all malt whiskey, so malt stays, so it becomes single malt, of course, but they're all made up of multiple casks. A blend is just the ability to use other distilleries rather than just one. That's the only difference. 
And when you think about it in that way, there's the argument can only be that the, theoretically it can only be better in the hands of a skilled blender. When we get into blended Scotch whiskey, of course, we're bringing in a different drink altogether. There, we're bringing in grain whiskey, which is not malt. It's not made in a batch style. It's not made from 100% barley. It is made from other grains, wheat. It's made from wheat in Scotland. Very occasionally corn, and historically corn, um, but it's made from wheat, with a wee bit of malted barley in there, and it's made through a continuous still. It's a different drink. It is different. But when you blend it together, you have blended Scotch. But it depends on the proportions. You know, the the big, the big, dis, the huge distribution blends out there, 40, 30% blends, cheap blends, 20, 10% blends, that order. The good quality blends out there, Thompson TBBSW is practically all malt, as far as my blunt palate can share. The, T, uh, the McLean's Nose is famously 70% malt, 30% grain. Just fantastic drinks of whiskey for reasonable, reasonable prices. Uh, May folks like Deepa hear you, Roy, says Falsgraf, and Hoyt Hemphill saying Green Label is a good example of a malt blend. Exactly, Hoyt. Uh, Johnny Walker Green Label is a good example of a blended malt. There's no green whiskey in that particular Johnny Walker. Uh, but I would argue with you that the modern day Johnny Walker Green Label is a pale imitation of what it once upon a time used to be. Right, I'm going to get the most controversial one out of the way first. Spoiler, it didn't make the perma shelf. But in this house, it is absolutely a perma shelf item. The reason that this hasn't made it is that I know that I would be letting a lot of you down because you want this and you still can't get it. I am telling you, I assure you, I predict this whiskey is coming to you. This whiskey is hanging on the shelf a bit longer than it has. The secondary prices are making no profit for anyone. There's no desire to to buy this for the for the sole purpose of flipping. And the people who like to hoard, they've already got their ten bottles of this. It's coming back to us. This is the gorgeous, the sumptuous, the wondrous, the amazing, Cokerin. 12 year old. This is not my whiskey of the year. The 16 year old got my whiskey of the year, but this was very, very valid and in consideration. Um, I am holding up two here, but as you can see, all these cocarins that I have over my shelf here, and I can't talk about anybody hoarding. There are, there's lots and lots of different variations of cocarin here, eight year old cast strength. There's lots, the 16 year old is down there. There's lots of cocarin, but I've got some more up here too because I'm just crazy for it. I love the stuff. I love it. It's down there because it is my, it's probably my whiskey fetish right now. So why am I not putting this on the perma shelf? I've already explained. I know there's going to be a lot of hurt from me putting it there because you cannot and you do want desperately to get it. It's coming. And when it does arrive, you know that it has not been neutered. It's not been diluted. They've not cut any corners and they've not changed anything in order to get it to you. It's just taken time. Every time I've sipped Cokerin 12, it seems to surprise me. Just I'm a bit like its sibling from down the road, Springbank's 10. It surprises me just how good it is. Perhaps one day in the future we'll be able to walk in and with a 70% success rate, pick up a Cokerin 12 off the shelf at retail. When we reach that spot, it'll absolutely shift one of these. One of these will be taken away. Cokerin will get there. Blimey, I have one Cokerin, one. Sachin, I know. You, uh, I'm fortunate. I'm very fortunate. I do leverage the location I live in to get bottles, but let me look at the camera for as long and as straight without blinking or wavering. I never use favours or the fact that doing what I do, oh, come on, I'm going to talk about it positively in the VPUB, give me a bottle. It doesn't happen. I've got friends in retail. I've got friends in production. I've got friends in the business. I never ask favours. If I can't get it, there is no point in me talking about it. I want whiskey for my content, for sharing with you, 
that is valid and you can talk about, or you can look forward to, to finding in the future. If you travel to Scotland, you can pick up a bottle of Thompson TV BSW, for example. You might not be able to do that right now with Co-Karen 12, but it's changing and it's lasting and hanging around a wee bit longer. I've been able to buy these bottles through opportunity. And I'm very, very grateful for it. Falscraft is saying, even in Germany, difficult to get any Kulkeren. But I bet you there are millions and millions of bottles over there. I hope most of it is open. Let's have a wee look at that blend question there. If I click on this poll, oh, that's wonderful to see. Wonderful to see. The tides, they are a-changing, right? Are you reluctant because the TBBSW is a blend? No. 86%. Only 14% of our community is a wee bit reluctant because they see it as a blend. And I imagine that out of those 14%, more than half of them, I think I could convert to saying, aye, okay, this is, this is different. This is very, very good drinking whiskey. But if you want to st stick with single malt, if that's your lane, if you want to stay there, no judgment from me, continue. But at least they stay there because you've been open-minded and you've tried the left lane and the right lane and your lane is the right lane. One, two more bottles to share with you tonight, and then we can get on with an interesting quiz at the end. How are we doing for time? 146, we're doing okay for time. Thank you to everyone. Still, we've stayed at 400 tonight for most of the night. That means a hell of a lot to me. Thank you for indulging me. Thank you for your support. Cheers. Two more to go. But let's tell you what this... Um, bottle was that I accidentally opened thinking it was the Thompson Brothers. This is a treat bottle for me, but I guarantee you yeah, there's topics in the future for the VPUB that I will be able to share this bottle in a very positive way, hopefully as well. I've tried this before, but I was cheeky today and I tried a wee bit in the shop when I was in earlier. This is a bottling by the Good Spirits Company. You're not going to be able to get this, not very easily. Um, you can order it online, I guess. But there will come a time in the future where we will say, do you remember when we used to be able to buy 25-year-old Invergordon whiskey at 51.4% ABV? Tastes like sweet, creamy, custard creams and vanilla. Gorgeous texture, elegant, sweet, I'll admit that it's sweet, gorgeous. How much do you think this 25-year-old Inver Gordon cost me at Good Spirits Company today? Greg's Whiskey Guide is saying, Scandal Aquavitae, kidding. For me, a permashelf should include a rye whiskey. Just my taste and value accessibility-wise, I'll choose lot 40 at 43%. Greg, I think that's a fantastic shout. And I think that everyone's permashelf is going to be a lot more varied than mine. I chose to make it easy on myself by sticking to scotch because if I if I included world whiskies maybe a rye whiskey would, would appear maybe an Indian whiskey would appear in the shape of Indri or something maybe a bourbon in the shape of wild turkey 101 eagle rare 10 some others maybe Greg even a French whiskey might have appeared but I didn't I chose to be lazy <clears throat> and keep it to just scotch I hope that's okay. This is the VPUB, it's me, it's Agravite. Nobody willing to guess. Whiskey Weekend Drama is saying £89. Pounds. 89 pounds. I can tell you, and the lack of guesswork from you, that I paid for this 25-year-old Inver Gordon, I paid £75 pounds at the Good Spirits Company. Shall I open it now? I think this is a good sharing bottle for me to carry with me. If I was going to get a Limburg or something this year, this is a perfect wee bottle to take along. Um, aye. Or potentially I could use it for a topic in a future VPUB. So I hope you forgive me for keeping this one sealed a wee bit longer tonight. Plenty of whiskey to be sipping and getting on with. If you bully me enough, <laughs> you know what I'm like. I'll get it opened. 
Malcolm Douglas is saying £75. Whiskey Butt is saying £75. James Cadden has been cheeky and saying £40. 25-year-old whiskey for £40. Maybe you were around in the day, James. Uh, uh, those days are long gone. Uh, Rafael is saying uh, £90. 75 quid is the money. £75. Amazing. Two more bottles to share with you. One doesn't make it. One does. And I'm looking to see the target that I'm going to take away. Do I still agree with the one? Yes, I'm going to agree with it. One doesn't make it, one does. Ben Romack. This is the 10-year-old. A lot of you would have re replaced it with the cast strength or various other Ben Romacks right now. It's very much in vogue. People are loving it. Glenn Geary. This is a Glengarry 12 year old at 48% ABV. Uh, it does say non chill filtered in the label. It doesn't talk about colour. Uh, this has been a 10 year old at 43% ABV. And it doesn't talk about chill filtration, but it does say natural colour on the label. So, you know, it's just for both of them, they're like, they're like <laughs> almost there, but not quite, right? Just, uh, and that's why I've left them till the end. Because I did make some uh, allowances for the Glenroric 12 to appear there before. Uh, and Schmorin is here, the 12 year old from Loch Lomond. I still got a wee bit of uh, artificial colouring in, we believe. They don't put natural colour on the label, so they're adding a wee bit of colour into that, but it still made it there. So we're not being completely idiotic snobs about this, but we are trying to preserve integrity. These two almost make it. This one is coloured. This one is natural colour, but it is chill filtered. So what's your priority here? They both have age statements on it. They're both great quality, dense, interesting, complex, richly flavoured single malt scotch whiskies. I'm going to pick one of these to replace a natural whisky. And I'm not picking on this because it's a blend. And I'm not picking on it because it is anything other than just had its time. We love it. We're talking about it. We, we rave about this. And I guarantee you, there's a good chance that when I drain this, this is not the, the perma shelf, but in my collection, there's a good chance that I'm going to want, if not another Orchard House back in the collection, but another Compass Box whiskey. But out of all of this lineup here, I want to make space for one of these two because I love it so much. What's it going to be? It's really hard to pick. We have to keep it. It's not an 11 sh bottle shelf. The shelf, we haven't found a way to suddenly extend it. We're not putting any on the floor. It's got to be on the shelf. One of them has to go. And it was the Orchard House that I picked. I sacrificed a wonderful whiskey from Compass Box in order to put one of these forward. Mike Molasses is saying, Paul! I'm going to uh, I'm going to stick like I did with the Guardian of Isle. I'm going to do the exact same thing again, and I'm going to just see what your opinion would be, and I'll let it play out in the background. Start a poll. Which Ben Romac ten natural color or Glenn. Geary, 12, non chill filtered. Ben Rowick, Glenn Geary. It's over to you now. I'm going to stick with my selection, by the way. Um, I'm going to start justifying it now, and my language will not change. Um, one of these producers is their AWOL. Um, they are not really connected with us. They just they put out a good product, and we're grateful for it, and we're glad that it's there. It's almost odd that it exists, and it is there. And yet, I am very, very grateful that it is there. I'm grateful that it's there at the price, and it's good that we are able to connect with it. But it's... It's almost like, how can this exist? But there is a lot of investment going on in there, and there is a lot of things going to be happening in the future that is very, very positive for us as whiskey botherers. There's another company out there 
that is right up Enthusiast Street. I mean, they are doing the geeky stuff. They're bringing out all of these playful things. They're bringing out all of these higher ABV cast strength things. They're just really flattering us. And yet, they belligerently hold out on their core range, keeping it chill filtered. For what reason? Because it sells. It sells, and they don't want to mess with it. So my choice is either on this occasion, gel filtration or color. Let's go with flavor. I did this the other night. I was really surprised. Really fruity, fruity, fruity on the Glengarry. Really quite a nice ripe fruity nose tonight. But dense and a wee bit, teeny wee bit lactic, a wee bit farmyardy. Uh, maybe let's go into the kind of the the agricultural shed. Let's go into where they've got tools and hint of creosote, that type of thing. Let's go to the bin roll rack. Okay, now, okay, now we're getting creosote. Okay. Lighter, bizarrely lighter, fresher, fruitier, more floral, more outdoors. How can there be less funk on a bin Romac, right? We call it the Spring Bank of Speyside. Glengarry is not Speyside, it's Eastern Highlands. Not that that makes much odds. Quite surprised. This is not nosing the way it did the other night. God, amazing. That's amazing. So the, tonight, the Glengarry seems to be much more dense. And this is lighter and brighter. And you wouldn't say light and bright typically to discuss a bin Romac. The Benromac uh, earlier this week, the, the smoke was there. It was it was dark, it was damp, it was outdoors. But it's quite light and fresh tonight. Let's go. Whiskey's playing with us just to show us that we don't know anything. Lovely, lovely flavours. Lovely flavours, lovely texture, despite the 43% ABV, you know. Talk about gel filtration and things like that. There is still a lovely mouthfeel to this. However... We know that there's a good chance that something has been removed. Anyway, just let's not let's not dwell. 48% ABV. There is a wee nip here on the rose. Maybe you can detect a higher ABV. I'd say yes. I don't think it makes it hot or difficult to approach. Wow. Big, bold, heavy, weighty, shouty. M more casky, more sherry cask, I would say. More kind of, uh, almost like a like of a uh, reminiscent of kind of European oak. Uh, you know, just that that nice grip, that nice texture on the palate. But it's sweet on the finish. Uh, fully, fully expect this to be majority American oak. Listen, both of these are cracking, cracking whiskies. Let's see if we agree. I can only see one on the poll right now and it's at 51% ABV so it hangs in the balance <laughs> but I'm only giving it one space and I'm sorry to the one of the most zeitgeisty fashionable loved whiskies out there <laughs> Ben Romac is getting a wee bit of a no it's not not these it's just having to stay a wee bit longer and Glenn Geary gets to stand on the on the perma shelf for a wee bit. And I think that backs it up tonight as well, does it? That's good. I think that's awfully good too. No. Oh. One more, one more. Sorry, it's weight, it's texture, it's ABV. Everything is helping the Glengarry tonight. Yeah. Sipping the, the Bin Romac in isolation, it would sing. You would love it. You would absolutely love it. You would forgive the fact that it's 43%. You would. But non-chill filtered, the extra ABV, the 48%, it makes it difficult to argue. It's density, there's the weight, there's the body, the mouthfeel, texture. I'm talking European oak, but it's not. It's just that it's the extra grip there, extra flavor, 
extra flexibility if you wanted to put a wee bit of drops of water in there and play with the whiskey, see if you can get a bit of cloud, a bit of mist in the glass, but I tell you, just dilute it, bring it down, just drops of water, whatever it is. There's, there's more flexibility in there. Cost you a wee bit more money for the Glengarry 12 year old than the Bin Romac 10, but there's not much in it, maybe four or five pounds of a price difference, not much. I'm going to go with the Glengarry. I suspect that you guys have once again disagreed with me. Let's have a wee look. 162 of you voting. 51% Ben Romack, 49% Glengarry. Right in a the balance there. That proves, so it's only going to take one or two votes to swing it back. Or, it proves that both of these whiskies are worthy of a permashelf perma position, and it's just down to your own personal preference. Fantastic. Now, let me talk about the important thing tonight as I end this poll. Let's clear the decks here. Let's talk about price. Price is the, it's, it's difficult. People say, Roy, are you going to, when are you going to stop, stop talking about price and start just talking about whiskey? Okay. Most of tonight I've talked about, well, very little of tonight I've devoted to price. But we know what's coming. Price is more and more and more part of our daily interactions in whiskey or daily discussion. Price, 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 it's too expensive and we're doing this. Not buying it anymore. I've had enough. Too expensive. Sorry about my light flickering on, on and off in the background there. This is understandable, but we need to, as I said at the start of the stream, we need to, in order to have perspective, we need to get perspective. How are we going to do that? We're going to break it down. We're going to study it. Back in 2022, the original 10 bottles I put up here cost me, or would have cost me in 2022, £442. I have my notes from that VPUB. £442. I'll tell you the prices. Deanston 12 49 Glencaram 10 39 Lechick 10 42 Arbeg 10 48 Loch Lomond 12 and Schmurin 39 Craigellachie 13 46 Glenronic 12 45 Orchard House 42 Ardmark and Cast Strength 65 That was a £65. There's a, bit of, there's a bit of price in there. And then Glass House 34 how much do we think it's cost me in 2024? Now, I went into the Bank of England website, and you can put in time periods and work out what the inflation would do to your money. So if you put in £442 in 2022, it will tell you in 2024 how much money you would expect that to be. And the Bank of England told me that £442, based on the exchange rates over the last couple of years, should turn into £480 in 2024. So that's our target, according to the Bank of England, 440 sorry, £480. So let's remind you, uh, I can put up a wee banner there for, for those of you that... £442 in 2022, with inflation, our target is 480 What do you think has happened to the prices of our whiskey in 2024. We know the discussion. We know that we are constantly shown example after example after example after example after example of people being opportunistic. People of just pricing based not what on is a reasonable price to charge for that whiskey because of what it costs to make, what it costs to mature, what it costs to bottle and present good chunk of profit for everybody involved in the supply chain, very good. No, they're not. They're pricing it based on what the market will stand. And by the way, everybody that's further down the supply chain from the producer is not really getting much of a share of that profit. Most of it is lying with the distiller who tends to set the recommended retail price or the bottler, whoever they may be. And sorry, there's just too much of it that is just utterly tone deaf right now to what everybody is saying, all the feedback that you're getting, you still continue to release whiskies 
that are too expensive. And you may be successful and you may sell out of them. You may do very well out of them, but you won't do your reputation any favours and you won't curry favour from your existing customer base, the loyalty, the existing community, the people that rave about your products. And you'll find it very difficult to bring new people into your brand. But carry on, do as you want. You need to find a way to be fair. And right now there's not enough fairness out there. It might be that things with older age statement is rarer. It's not an excuse to gouge. If it's really that rare, there's not enough of it to make a lot of money on. Why are you destroying your reputation on such small amounts of liquid? Make your money evenly across the board. Make, price everything like your brand depends on it. Because right now, too much of you are losing people right, left and centre. Think of the brands that have long gone off the radar. We don't talk about McAllen anymore. McAllen are very successful. They're doing very well. Not with us. And I wonder about how long their model can endure. But they're first over the finish line. They've got the luxury position in Scotch whiskey. They are the Rolex of Scotch, the Rolls Royce. Look at everybody else that's tried, tried to chase them. Tam Du, Glengoyne, Highland Park. So many others. Dalmore. <laughs> uh, how are they doing? I don't know. Maybe well. Not in the domestic markets. Certainly not with people who know whiskey, I think. However, as a whiskey community, we need to take ownership and we need to keep perspective. We need to keep perspective. I'm going to tell you now that if I bought the same 10 bottles in 2022 from 2022 and 2024, target of £480, I can tell you I would have to spend £452 today. And those two years with all that ridiculous price hikes, with all that ridiculous in inflation, it's gone up £10. It's the same price as it was two years ago when I originally did this topic. So I've abused it a wee bit and I've picked cheaper bottles out from this lineup and put more expensive ones in. With one caveat, what I've used as an example tonight is Arda Merkin's AD, but in 2022 it was the cast strength, a bit more expensive, but the price in my calculation tonight is still £65 for the cast strength. So you can save a bit of money on the price I'm about to share with you now. This lineup will cost you between £462 and £480. The most you'll pay, but not shopping too hard, is £480. What I'm saying to you now is I've improved the selection, I've improved the integrity to my mind, brought it up to date with 2024, with where I'm sitting, my palate and preferences in 2024, and I have still kept it under inflation based on a cheaper lineup of products two years ago. So yes, price remains a huge challenge for us as a community. It's terrifying what we are being asked to pay for these whiskies, and we need to say no. Too expensive, off you go. Because there is plenty whiskies for us to enjoy, for us to share, for us to get consensus like we have tonight and agree with each other that these are good whiskies that bring new people into the community at reasonable prices. Because right now, that bottom rung of the ladder is just getting a bit too high. The only way that whiskey is going to endure is if we bring more people into the community, more people into un understanding what whiskey is, more people evangelizing about it, talking about it, sharing it. Grow that community. For the basic stuff, the middle of the road stuff, and the premium stuff, all of it. That's not happening right now. Our community is starting to struggle to continue to grow because of the challenges of the, the good stuff, the premium stuff, the single cast stuff, the limited stuff, special, special, special. It's not, if everything's special, nothing special, stop it. Ground yourselves, bring it back, grow the community, grow your audience first and do that with integrity and honesty and the potential longevity of your business. Well, I'm a preachy, 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 I know. I can only speak from my gut and my heart 
And I think I speak on behalf of a lot of folk in the community too. But I guarantee you, everybody in the community have to hold their hand up and say, it's probably a surprise that that whiskey has outperformed the inflation rates. It is arguably cheaper in 2024 than it was in 2022. That's surprising. Daniel Williams has saying recently bought a cast strength 18-year-old signatory Macallan for 250 euro. Now, if that was what they were bottling, I, 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 I wouldn't buy the OB. He said, I think I've got one of those down here somewhere. Yes. And I, I don't think I paid that for it. I think it was much, much less than that. This is a, I don't know what age, did you mention your age there, Daniel? 18-year-old? Yeah, this is a 17-year-old. Um now, it doesn't say McAllen on the label, which is why we're able to pick it up so, so cheaply, but it says M in brackets. The only other thing it can refer to potentially is Mortlack, but come on. We know. David Larenko is saying, I'm in. Jimmy Legg is saying, thank you, David. Uh, Peter Lee is just a little bit more special than the rest of us. Aye, hugs to Peter Lee. Is he in tonight? It'd be good if he was able to make it back from his work tonight to join us. Fantastic. Excess to Scotch, you're saying your perma shelf in the Netherlands is cheaper. I don't doubt that for a second. It's frustrating as hell. But fair play to you. If you get it cheaper in the Netherlands, I'm glad you're able to, and it's, uh, it's enjoyable. Danny Heavington is saying, if, if I've had no drams and I try to keep it under 60 quid after a few drams, well, just don't tell the wife. You are aware that that's a thing, and you can put in things to fix it, can't you, Danny? Ben is saying, easy way to get best past price is not to have a perma shelf. Buy what's good value every time you want to buy whiskey. Loads out there, experience new things. I agree. The point of the perma shelf, though, is to... Whiskey is a very emotive thing. They become like friends. They become reliable companions. And when you want to bring somebody into whiskey, rather than this new amazing thing, transient thing that you've been able to enjoy, you can't recommend to them. It's probably gone already. Whatever it is, a wee bit too niche, a wee bit too specialist, a wee bit too... You need this... Re if I talk about we've reached a limit, we seem to be plateauing as a community, we need to grow the community, we need to bring more people into whiskey. Whiskey should not be a super exclusive pursuit. It should be something that everybody, it's the people's drink, something that everybody can in, in, involve themselves in. We need to keep a focus on this type of stuff. Uh, forgive me for uh, for the, the V-pubs that do focus on this. Mikey, I say, an evening Aqua Vitae, an evening all made at home for the quiz. Fantastic, Mikey, you are in time for the quiz and it's good to have you here. Falsegraph is saying, I'm not buying it anymore. My whiskey budget is going to increase, but not as much as inflation has increased. So, more money, less whiskey. Pity, but that's what I can afford. Falsecraft, you're the same as me, and you're the same as the entire community. But we are rude. We are saying, I'm not going to buy anymore. I'm not going to buy anymore. I'm not going to buy anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Klaus, you and I can say that because we have the luxury of very, very deep stocks at home. If we had two or three bottles and we were supercharged, jazzed and excited about whiskey, we would want to go out and buy more. And to hear people saying, I'm not buying anymore, that would be jarring for us. It would be difficult to hear. We can only say that because of the privilege that we have of the stocks that we sit on. We need to look at the people coming into the space and understand what it's like for them. And it might be intimidating, not just by the sheer choice, the sheer kind of gobbledygook and buzzwords and phrases of it all and the knowledge that you have to gain, but it might also be intimidating because... There's a lot of complacency and years and years and years of accumulation in the community. We need to remain to try and be as open as we can be. Roy, this topic has really shown your passion and a great light this evening. It's good to see you. Thank, thank you, Jimmy Legg. If I want some positive words and support, if I need the sales inflated, I like to be able to rely on my man in Nova Scotia. Thank you, buddy. Tommy Elmer is saying, when you're bringing someone in and you want them to taste something that is no more or too expensive, gift them. Like I say, that's a great idea, Tom. If you can afford to make such generous gestures, if you can gift things, absolutely. Peter Lee is saying, had a busy night, Spayburn 15 at £48 discounted at Drambuster. Excellent tip, Peter Lee. Falsegraf is saying, but isn't the permashelf a thing that E.G. Ralphie is always warning of? Uh, cemented habits, sticking to one thing? Absolutely. Loyalty is easy to, uh, if you if you declare your loyalty to a brand, you will be abused. 
They will find a way to take more and more and more money out of you. Absolutely. This is the perma shelf. By definition, the thing that remains constant and permanent in whiskey. And it is not the whiskey, it's the shelf. Even the perma shelf, we remain promiscuous. And we will take away bottles and we will replace it with other bottles. Notice I did not remove one bottle from that perma shelf tonight because of price. Graham Young is saying cheers to whiskey as a reliable friend. Cheers to a community of reliable barflies and to some key meetups in 2024 all over the world. Cheers, Roy. Thank you for your dram, Graham. And thank you uh, for the kind words too. I'm looking forward to 2024 as well. I'll apologise as I raise this glass to everybody for getting a wee bit high horsey, soapboxy, preachy, passionate, whatever it may be. Cheers to you all. Thanks, Dan. That is the answer I was looking for. Klaus, thank you so, so much. There's a wee bit of a spin on tonight's quiz, and I hope you don't mind. Brian Cabayas, sorry, he's bought me a wee dram. Uh, do UK liquor shops match or beat to cheaper prices if you find a better price from another store? It happens here in Australia. Just get the best price possible. It helps a lot at times. Cheers. Um, oh, I think they make an effort to make sure that they're competitive and on the same price. But they need to pay for their staff and their their building that they live in and wherever they are in the world. My local liquor store is in the Glasgow city centre, which can't be cheap to house a store there, right? So if if I go in and I find Benromac 10, if I can find it online at 42 quid, let's say, and they've got it in the shop at 45, 46 quid, I'll give them the money for it. What they give me back in terms of instant, convenient interaction, chat, Sometimes if I've got the time and I've not got the car, I'll be able to taste something. I'll be able to get the wee inside. Oh, have you seen this? Have you heard of this? I'll be able to just, it's worth so much more. And when it comes to building community, online stores struggle to do that. I don't know, even know how much they make an effort to do that. But if you go to your local shop, you're put in touch with other whiskey fans, clubs, events, uh, their tastings, what they're doing, uh, everything is they are the hub, they are the they are the and they're being ignored and they're being overstepped right now. And it's up to us. I'm not telling you that you cannot buy online. I buy online. But when we have the opportunity, when we have the mood and the moment to be able to go into a bricks and mortar retailer, a local as long as they're not gouging on price, let's consider supporting them. Jimmy, like I said, your local store has some very special employees. You've met them, Jimmy. Some of you know one, a bearded character in particular. Roddy and I were talking about a topic for a VPUB this very week. Peter Lee saying, I agree, shopping local has the perks, especially when Roddy is working. Uh, absolutely. Well, all this stuff in that wee shop. Um, and wherever your local shop or preferred shop is, you're going to be able to build relationships with them. Absolutely. Be polite. Yes, I like the local shops also more. Fantastic access to scotch. And Desi is saying, recently wanted to pour a dram for my niece's boyfriend, but realised that I only have cast strength whiskey on the shelf. Tonight gave me an idea. It's so easy to overlook the cornerstone whiskies. Big hugs, Daisy. Thank you very, very much. It's exactly the purpose of all of this. It's why I spoke to the patrons the way I did this week in my wee write-up. David Larenko is saying, this is what we're here for, community versus industry, and we can get ahead. Cheers. Cheers to you, David, as well. Let me tell you about the quiz tonight. Uh, Michael Wood commented fantastically that he had done something with the quiz to play against, as he called it, the monkey. Remember back in the day when I told you it was multiple choice and even if you gave it a chimpanzee an opportunity, they would still be able to score 33%. That's based on Hans Rosling and the Gapminder Foundation. Fantastic thing, that wonderful dissonance, that distance that we have between knowledge and what we believe to be knowledge. And the, the gap in between the truth and what we believe to be the truth is often huge. <laughs> and when we learn the truth, we're often shocked and surprised. So his foundation was based on minding the gap, gap minder foundation. And he often talked about giving people multiple choice in order to determine what they believed the truth to be and what the actual truth was. And he said that even the chimpanzees could score 33%. And that's where the joke came from, for multiple choice at the quiz at the end. Michael Wood played the monkey. He played the chimpanzee. He, he wrote down, so let's do it now. Can I do it now? Have I got a piece of paper here? Yes. So I can do it now. I can play against the chimpanzee in the quiz at the end. I hope you can all do this for a bit of fun. And just let's write down B, A, A, C, 
B, A. One, two, three, four, five, six. B, C, C, A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there we go. There's the monkey score. Now I'm cheating because I know what the answers are. I can't remember them. Of course, I'm not actually cheating, but I could theoretically be cheating. That's the monkey that I'm playing against tonight. Let's see how they get on. Let's see how the chimpanzee scores tonight. <laughs> That's what I thought could be a bit of fun. So as you're playing along, you maybe want to share your score just for kicks. We might only do it once. It might just get a bit too crazy and a bit too silly, but it might be fun to see what the monkey would score as well. So tonight's VPUB, tonight's 1st of February, quiz at the end. You might notice another wee word that you can almost make out there. Might help you a wee bit, you never know. But we are going to bring in the blind chimpanzee, the blind monkey. Mike is saying, just follow my score to see how the monkey scores. And Jimmy Leg is saying, eh, as an experienced monkey with Uroi, I'd pick all Cs. <laughs> yeah, you might find that that's a good strategy. You never know. Uh... Brian Caballas has, has bought me a wee dram to say, do UK licorice? I did pick up that one, didn't I? I did uh, 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 read it out. Thank you. Where's Roy over in Norway? My pal Roy, good to see you. Solo VPUB, but with great passion as always. Thank you very much, Roy. Thank you. Maybe I'll see you in Germany this year, buddy. Cheers to you. Thank you for the dram. It's Glengarry going down a treat. Ian Bruce is saying, I hope it's not the monkey running loose from the Highland wildlife. Well, they caught him. They caught the loose macaque. Hey, only a couple of miles from the wildlife park, eating from a bird table in someone's garden. So they managed to tranquilize him and get him back home today. One doubt, always a C. One doubt, always a C. So everybody thinks it's always C. Let's see how you got on with that tonight. You can just do 10 Cs. See how we got on. But just do that. Just r r list, list 10 random answers uh, and then play along as you normally would and see how the monkey, how the chimpanzee would have scored. Question one. Good luck, everyone. It's always multiple choice. Only share your scores if you actually want to. In which Speyside distillery would you find the Wee Witchy? Where would you find the Wee Witchy? You would find it either in A, Royal Loch Nagar, B, Mortlach, or C, Speyburn. According uh, to the monkey... Well, I won't, I won't tell you what the monkey scores. Um, and of course, I'm not playing it. Uh, it's only the chimpanzee that's playing from my side tonight. Can I just say thank you so much? Uh, we're over 400 for most of tonight, but the fact that we've got 283 still watching now for the quiz at the end, after you've been hearing me banging my gums for over two hours, is uh, wonderfully uh, fortifying. Thank you so much. Thanks to all of you. I hope you do enjoy hanging out for the quiz at the end. It's always intended to be fun, of course. Maybe you learn something. Maybe you just get frustrated. No, Rolex is here. Good to see you. Caught it with a Yorkshire pudding bait. <laughs> the monkey, yeah. Fantastic. Jimmy Leg got one and the monkey got none. He's confident. Absolutely. The wee witchy can only be found at Mortlack Distillery. And I can tell you that this monkey on this side is scoring one as well. Question two, which of these relatively new distilleries use worm tub condensers? Which of these relatively new distilleries use worm tub condensers? A, Ballandalich, do they use worm tubs? B, Rosebank, do they use worm tubs? Or C, Brora, do they use worm tubs? Greg's Whiskey Guide, Greg in Paris, good to see you, buddy. Gre uh, yep, interesting VPUB Rob, Rob, Roy, sorry. <laughs> Roy, VPUB Roy, and always something interesting to get from each quiz indeed. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Brian Cabias is saying maybe all of them. Mm -hmm. One glass man is saying me, a monkey, C. Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Spot on, Brian, spot on. What was that? The one glass man, yes, that's Warner. Good to see you, my friend. Good to have you in. Spot on. Ballandalich has worm tubs. Rosebank has worm tubs. Brora has worm tubs. I'm not sure that Brora always had worm tubs. I think it used to be shell and tube. 
but the new distillery has got worm tubs. Apparently. So there we go. A freebie for everyone. That means the monkey over here got it right as well. Question three. What was said of John Smith, the founder of Craig and Moore, whose name still features on the 12-year-old bottle of Craig and Moore, the official release? What was said of John Smith? He was A, too fat to get on a train, B, too thin to go out in a storm, or C, too tall to frequent the local inns. John Smith of Craig and Moore was either too fat to get in a train carriage, too thin to go out in a windy storm, or too tall to frequent the low ceilings of the local inns. Pete Head is asking, was he a banana skin? Ian Bruce is saying the monkey will love the banana skins. Uh, never even thought of that, Ian. Brilliant. Superb. See how the monkey's doing on this one? What have I got in this glass? Thompson Brothers TV BSW. What's this one? It's easy when you know what you've poured, right? What's the one with the cover on it? <laughs> Go home and sanic. <laughs> Fantastic. And this one here. Oh, must be our Glen Cadam or our Deanston. Right, okay. I can tell you that John Smith was actually a so big so large that he couldn't fit through the door to go on the train carriages and he had to instead ride in the guards the guards carriage instead or the guard car john smith was a big lad and he couldn't easily fit in the 19th century train carriages i have to say that the monkey has just scored three for three <laughs> Oh, the how the irony, right? If the monkey scored 10 out of 10 on one quiz and I couldn't and I've never done it. Anyway, question four. Let's keep going. Let's keep the grind. Which of these sites actually has two distilleries in operation? I'm going to give you three distilleries, but on one of uh, those distilleries, there's actually two distilleries on the same site. Is it A, Royal Loch Nagar? B, Edradour, or C, Inchgower. A, Royal Loch Nagar, Eastern Highlands. B, Edradour, Southern Highlands, would we say? C, Inchgower, Speyside. Well, I don't know about the chimpanzees, the monkeys, but... Chimpanzees and monkeys are very different things. I think we need to differentiate. I used to say chimpanzees. Michael Wood, in his comment, said the monkey. We'll just let, let it take its own, whatever, however you want to refer to it. Always follow Graham Fraser, says Greg's Whiskey Guide. Okay. Graham Fraser, if he's in, he is in. And he's suggesting that it's Edradar, and he's absolutely right. Edradour, the, the idea was that they would have Edradour and then the second distillery would become Balachin or Balachin, depending on your pronunciation. Um, but unfortunately, they'd already been selling Balachin as a single malt. So they couldn't make a new distillery to sell something that already existed, produced at another place. Um, so they just ended up calling it Edradour 2 and they've just got two distilleries on the same site. Uh, Andre was here last week. We should have asked him a wee bit more about that. Maybe a missed opportunity. I get the impression that maybe we could have Andre back in the future. Picture question is always question five. Uh, how did my chimp... Oh, he got that one wrong. The chimpanzee got that one wrong. He's now three for four. Let's roll into the picture question. There's quite a nice sight. A lot of clouds in the sky, some water, high aspect. Three out of four for Ian Bruce. The chimp is only scoring one out of four. Yeah. All the chimps out in the lounge are not doing very, very well. <laughs> I love this. I love the participation. You're all scoring for your chimps. Where are we? Where are we in this photograph? In order to take this photograph, we are either A on Isla, we are B in the Western Highlands, or C in the Northern Highlands. Where are we? A on Isla, 
be Western Highlands, see Northern Highlands. Alistair McPhail is saying, can someone tell us, Graham Fraser, how to pronounce Balakin? Stress on first or second syllable. I can tell you that uh, the most natural and easy way, Alistair, for most people to pronounce it is Balakin. But I can tell you that I called them in order to do my video and spoke to Andrew Symington. And I'm probably pronouncing Symington, Symington's name wrong. But I asked him and he said Balakin. His interpretation is Balakin. So I changed and I actually overdubbed my recording on that video and, and changed it from Balakin to Balakin. So it's the second syllable. However, if you say Balakin, nobody's going to deny you a dram. So don't stress it. However, if they were to brand or heavily market themselves or whatever and they, uh, they insisted that they be called a uh, Balakin, then you would just you would just have to learn that it's not... Hey, Glen Morangi, it's Glen Morangi. You would have to do that, wouldn't we? It's not Balakin, it's Balakin. Okay, fantastic. Picture is taken on the road to Bunahaven, says Peahead. Oh, kind of close, kind of close, very, very close. I can tell you that we are on Isla, but we are actually on the grounds of Arnahoe Distillery. So there we go. That is the Papsadura. They are a wee bit uh, uh, obscured by the cloud there. Alistair McPhail is saying I was in Rwanda this week. Gorilla in the mist country. There was the, there were no use in a VPO quiz. <laughs> Gorillas. Yeah. Question six. Okay, how did the monkey get on there be? How did he get on? Oh, we got that one wrong. Three for five this side. Question six. Which of these distilleries uses a water source? with the same name as the distillery. So we're looking for a water source and a distillery of the same name out of these three. A, Ardnahoe on Isla. B, Dalwini, right in the middle of the map in the Speyside region. And C, Springbank in Campbelltown. Which of those distilleries uses a water source that has the same name as the distillery itself? For me, Arnahoe is on the road to Benahaven. Spot on, Pete Ed. Absolutely right. And everybody recognises that view. There's something in all five of my glasses here. I've got a wee bit to go home and Sanic to enjoy. So I've got a wee bit. I can't remember if it's Deanston or Glen Cadam that's in this one. I've got a wee bit of my Glen Geary. A wee teeny drip of my Ben Romac. And over here I've got the uh, Thompson Brothers. Sweet Sherry Thompson Brothers. Everyone going for A, Arnaho. So the water source is called called Arnaho. Sure, it's not Dalwini. Springbank. Springbank sounds like a water source, surely. Spot on. Despite the banana skin, you're absolutely right. Loch Arnaho provides the water process and a uh, production water for Arnaho. Um, Springbank is Cross Hill Loch. You might remember it from last week's V Pub. Uh, Dawini is uh, Loch Doryun, I think Doryun or something. Quite a distance from the distillery, but close enough to obviously provide the water. But uh, there we go. Arnaho is correct. A eh? and the, the chimp got it right. So we're now four for six. <laughs> this quite a a whiskey enthusiast chimpanzee at uh, this side. Question seven, starting to get tricky. Which of the five Inverhouse distilleries is the only one to not use worm tub condensers? To not use worm tub condensers. So out of the Inverhouse distilleries, one of these does not use worm tubs. A, Bal Blair. B, Knock Do. Or C, Pulteney. If this was in the first half of the quiz, maybe one of those would be a non-Inverhouse distillery to help you make it a 50-50 or something. But I can tell you that all of the options here are all Inverhouse distilleries. One of them does not have a worm tub.
Well, the chimpanzee this side got it wrong. I can tell you that Pulteney makes the brand old Pulteney, has a worm tub, Knockdo famously has a they've got lots of funky things going on with the, their condensers at Knockdo, but they do also have worm tubs. But Balblair does not. So many of you knocked out of the park. Daniel Caballero saying, I know this one. Excess to Scotch is saying, I go with the bar flies. Uh, and the Pete Head Frank uh, is saying that he's going with the same answer as Graham Fraser. So there you go, A for Bal Blair. So uh, my chimpanzee got that one wrong. So we're at four for seven. Let's see if he can make a pass mark. Question eight. How many years has the current edition of Craigellachie 13 been available. This is the current edition of Craig Elliki 13. And I'm just asking you, how many years has that been available? Is it 10 years, B, eight years, or C, six years? Craig Elliki 13 has been out for a decade, it's been out for eight years, or it's been out for six years. Just had a warning that my mouse is about to die. The battery is about to die. For those of you that know, that's a disaster if you've got a magic mouse from Apple because the charge port is underneath the mouse. It's, you can't plug it in here. So I've just connected it for a wee jag while I'm looking into the, the, the chat here. Andrew Pierce is saying, no idea, middle for diddle B. I need a dram, says Ben Dram Hunter. Good to see you, Ben. He's saying maybe in an hour or two, I don't know. Good to see you, Ben. I hope that when that dram comes, it tastes delicious. Brian Cabayas is saying, A, pure guess. Whiskey from the Vestibule. Good to see you in. Chris Banks Wildlife, also good to see you. Uh, along with Rob Smith and Sugar Kitty. Sugar Kitty, thank you for being here again. Talk Dogs of No Uncles. All saying, A, Ben Dram Hunter is thinking A as well. Pedro has been honest and saying, I've got no idea, but I'm going to go A and go with the barflies. Let's see how that worked out for you. I can tell you the chimpanzee at my side got that one wrong and he's now struggling for his pass mark. He's only got two chances left. I can tell you, believe it or not, that Craig Ellicke 13 has been out for a decade already. Really surprised. It still feels like a fresh brand to me. New Macs don't even come with a mouse now, says Hoyt Hemphill. Wow, it's crazy times. Hopefully because they imagine that people have got, you know, legacy magic mouse that they can connect up. Magic mice. Me seven, monkey one, excess to scotch. The chimpanzees are not doing that well out in the, out in the lounge, it seems like. Question nine, second from last. Charles, Charles Doig. Um... Inventor of the Pagoda ventilator, currently prophesized or uh, predicted, let's say, prophesized which distillery would be the last to be built in Speyside for 50 years. This is a famous thing. He said, we're building this distillery. This is going to be the last distillery that's built for 50 years in Speyside. And he turned out to be right. Which distillery was he referring to? A, Glen Talkers. B, Glen Elgin, or C, Glen Lossy. Falscraft's chimp is only doing, his monkey's only doing two for eight, but he's doing seven for eight. Chimp one for Graham, seven for eight. <laughs> it's brilliant that you've just embraced this and you're going with it. Rick Johnson on a seven strong score, looking for the eights. No eights for eights. We might have a tough quiz tonight with no eight out of eight so far. Let's see if we can find Graham Fraser. How is he doing? It's not a Graham Fraser photograph tonight, so you can participate. Where's Roy in Norway? Roy Overmere is on an eight alongside Gabriel Wilding. Good to see you, Gabriel. Well done, Roy. Okay, here come the answers for this one. When this distillery was built... Charles Doig said it would not be another space aid distillery for 50 years, and he was pretty close to the mark. Was he talking about Glen Talkers, Glen Elgin, or Glen Lossie? No idea, says Fernando, for this one. Go for B, follow some of the crowd. No pass mark for the monkeys is excess to scotch. No chance, no chance. That's right, on such a low score. 
I can tell you that my chimpanzee has not scored there either. He's struggling for a pass mark now. He needs the ass hat for a pass mark. He's on four for nine. I can tell you that you guys are super knowledgeable. You know that Glen Elgin built in 1898. Wouldn't see another Speyside distillery built until Glen Keith in 1958. 59 years passed in between the two distilleries. Quite amazing. Sure, Kitty saying, all I know is my monkey needs to get some sushi. <laughs> Great tuna. <laughs> Graham Young is saying, my monkey's a flunky. <laughs> so the chimpanzee theory doesn't always work. Mikey Hayes saying, me, seven out of nine, monkey only one out of nine. So the 33% chances thing is, it's 33% chance for one. It diminishes for two, it diminishes further for three. You're not going to have 30, 33% over 10. Just got a signal back. Nine out of nine for Graham Fraser. Few, fantastic. He's hanging in along with Sugar Kitty and Gabriel Welding. Maybe one or two others for a full score if you pass the deliberately awkward, ugly ass hat question at the end. A bit of thought. I think you've got a chance of getting this one tonight. Let's see. Does anyone know what the theme is tonight? Has anyone worked out what the theme was? Mm, there was a theme. Question 10. There are 19 Scotch malt distilleries operating with worm tub condensers. Every distillery that's been mentioned tonight, with the exception of potentially Glen Keith, right at the end there, has a worm tub condenser. So there we go. So I'm asking you out of the 19 Scotch malt distilleries operating with worm tubs, how many are owned by Diageo? How many worm tub distilleries does Diageo own? The same number as A, Isla Distilleries operating in 2024, throughout the entirety of 2024. B, the same number as Island Distilleries not on Isla or Arran. Or the same number as C, Scotch Malt Distilleries beginning with the letter S. You're just mentioning that there's a theme now. No, Jimmy. I'll go all the way back to the start. I did try to draw attention to it for those paying attention. You might just see ever so subtly on the right-hand side of the word end, you might be able to see theme. That might appear in the future. I do say might. Now I need to catch up and work out where I am. <laughs> So, how many worm dub, tub distilleries are owned by Diageo? The same number as Isla Distilleries operating in 2024, the same number as Island Distilleries not on Isla or Arran, or C, the same number of Scotch malt distilleries beginning with S. Wow, I can't type listen and read Aquavite. I am asking a wee bit much. I did mention it though, like quietly though. Sorry, Jimmy, I wonder if you had been aware you'd have probably twigged, you'd have probably worked out that all the distilleries mentioned were worm, worm tub distilleries. C, Graham Fraser says, an educated guess. Whiskey from the Vestibule is saying C. Sugar Kitty is saying B. David Lorenko is saying A. Falscraft is saying A now. No, C. <laughs> I'll go with B, says Pedro Menev. This is the, the beauty of the asshat, the ugliness of the asshat, the awkwardness, the belligerence of the asshat. The idea is, is that if you earn a 10 out of 10 on the quiz at the end, you need knowledge, you need friendship and support, community, and you also need a wee bit of luck as well. It's just it's designed to be horrible. It's the way that the quiz has evolved. I can tell you that there are 10 Scotch malt operating distilleries owned by Diageo. Scotch malt distilleries beginning with S is seven. Island distilleries not on Isla or Arran is nine. So the answer is Isla distilleries operating in 2024, which is, of course, Ardbeg, Lagavulin, Lefroig, Port Ellen, Bamor, Colila, Ardnaho, Bunahaven, Kilhoman, Brugladi. I included Port Ellen in the mix by 2025. Might have Port and Truin, Port and Um 
could have 11, could go at Gart Breck, could appear the year after that, could be 12. Crazy times, crazy times. So let's see how you guys got on with that. Where's Roy Ovimir? Oh, no, my goodness, slipped up. Was it that hat, Roy? I'm so sorry. 9 out of 10. He's scoring a 9 out of 10 tonight. We might have a no 10 out of 10s tonight. 8 out of 10 for David La David Lorenko. Fantastic Brian Cabayas on an 8 out of 10. Whiskey with Molly Benny out of 10. Me a 7 out of 10. Monkey 1 out of 10. Mikey Hay, fantastic. <laughs> Let's, how did his mind get on? Actually, mine get that one right, Minga. <laughs> My chimpanzee got a pass mark tonight, but I know that some of you might argue <laughs> that my chimpanzee is cheating. Did anyone manage a 10 out of 10? No, come on. A Gabriel, Gabriel Welding. No 10 out of 10 emoji coming in. Nothing, nothing. Well, Gabriel, I can't find your comment, my friend. I'm desperately scanning to see how you got on. Gabriel Welding, 9 out of 10, tripped on the ass. Oh, no. Graham Fraser, we know, is already tripped up. So we could have a night. No 10 tonight, Fernando. It could be the case. Then that's one on me. It's my fault. Made it just a nudge. But some of you got so close. And the chimpanzees, not so close. Mm -hmm. Danny Ebbington is saying that, giving Menno a run for his money. Sorry, Danny, not intentional. You, yeah, Your chimp, Aquavite, is a cheetah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> ah, Tarzan. I love it. Fantastic. We're of a similar age, Graham, obviously. Jimmy Legg is saying, I'm not Andrew Butler, but I can't get 10 out of 10 every week. It's Andrew Butler. How's is Andrew in tonight? It's a good chance that Andrew would get 10 out of 10 on this quiz tonight. I've not seen him, but he's perhaps there. Maybe he's in the background. Maybe he's playing along with his chimpanzee. I bet even Andrew Butler's chimpanzee is better than all the other chimpanzees that participate. <laughs> Peter Lee's bought me a dram. Can we all wish my lovely wife, Denise, a happy birthday on Saturday? Let's raise a dram to her big birthday. She's the whiskey princess, loved by all. I'm going to put in a, some a love in the chat here for Denise Lee. I, of course, hey, Peter, just ask. That's too easy. For the wonderful, for the charming, the gorgeous a, Denise Lee, I'm just going to fill it with wee whiskey hearts. I'm going to raise a glass and say, many happy returns, Denise. That's you clearly into your 30s now. Happy birthday. Light up the chat. I hope eh, a lot of you have had a, the opportunity to, to meet Denise. She's fantastic. I mean, we like Peter. We love Peter. But, but Denise is special. Let's be honest. Great stuff. How did we get on? How did we get on? I've got a, that frozen screen happening again. Do I need to do a refresh? It's weird that that's happened twice tonight. No, maybe not. Maybe it's okay. Anyway, there we go. I have managed to get through another wee solo session on the VPUB. I love it. I enjoy it very, very much. Um, sometimes I get, I get a wee bit nervous when it's just me doing it on my own and I don't have a guest to lean on. But I'll continue to mix it up. Bring guests on when it's appropriate. Bring the community on when it's fun. Eh, bring in blind challenges and all the other stuff. And eh, I still pony up and share with you the things that are in my mind and bothering me, things that I'm chewing on and thinking about and hoping that you can find some fun in it. Jimmy Legs bought me a dram, you star. I love Denise, eh, Denise Lee. Roy will buy her a dram the next time he sees her. Right, Roy? It's a deal, Jimmy Leg. I'll buy Denise a birthday dram and say, this is for Jimmy. I'll hold up this go home and Sanic and they, I'll make a promise to you, big guy. Cheers. Danny Hebbington has also bought me a generous dram. Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari. No, what, WTF? Oh, my goodness. Mercedes for, what, 10 or 12 years? Um. He's still got to drive for Mercedes this year. And uh, anyway, this is the V-Pub, sorry. It's not the Formula One pub, right? <laughs> um, I, I was surprised. But I still think it's going to be quite fun to see Lewis Hamilton in a wee red car. Gina Como is saying, a uh, member for 46 months, saying, happy birthday, Denise. Uh, I, I, I agree with that, Gino. Danny, thank you very much for your drama, friend. And cheers to you, Gino, for uh, being a member for 46 months. Going to close things down now. I'll be back here next week with a topic that is 
thus far not settled. Um, uh, there was discussion for a potential guest, but I think it's good to push that down a wee bit. Um, hope I'm not speaking out of turn. There's lots of things happening just now. There's lots of interesting things to talk about. Uh, I hope that regardless of what fits my mood and moment next week, some of you will be here to join me again. In the meantime, I hope that uh, you had a wee bit of fun and you've helped me uh, share what a perma shelf is for not just me, but for you guys in the community. Please share your perma shelves in the comments below. And also keep a wee bit of perspective and realize that despite what's happened over recent years with resources, raw materials, energy costs, inflation in general, that there's a lot of producers out there that are still punching above their weight in order to bring us good value whiskies that are actually outperforming inflation to the point that they are cheaper in 2024 than they were in 2022. That we should not tar everyone with the same brush and we should be very selective about the whiskey producers and distilleries that we give our loyalty to going forward. And the ones that take from us will remember that. The ones that give to us, the ones that enter into a partnership, that's the ones that we want to hang around with. Until next week, I'll raise this glass to you all and remind you that you're all very, very dearly loved. I'm very grateful to have had you here for another Thursday Night V-Pub. But until next week, slanchava to you all. Cheers, you beautiful whiskey folk. Dedicated barflies. Thank you.